to TT Boy TV. We are back in the house, and today we have a guest that will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we go back so far. Right, so far. Actually, I can't believe it took me this long to get her over here. She's been hiding from me. Go ahead. Anyways, please welcome one of the most famous, notorious, black female porno stars of all time, my ex, <laughs> way back, Dominique Simone. Yay! Hey! Hello. 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 <laughs> it's so weird to see the cross from you like this. this. It's been so long since I saw you. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. It was a long time before we saw you and Tom Sizemore in my office, but before that it was a long time. Yeah, it was like 20, 20 yeah. some years. Yeah. You were really mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was a long That was a long We got a lot of stuff to talk about, huh? Yeah. yeah. Actually, it might be interesting, huh? Yeah, because I did something that you did not know I did. So, really? You know. What? I hired a PI. You did? Yeah, he came into your we, we broke up, you know. I had him come over to your house and you had that little pretty eighteen year old girlfriend with the dentist dad. Oh, the dad, the chiropractor? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah? Yes, yeah, you don't remember the guy coming in and talking to you? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that was my PI. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I said I know he's with somebody, you know. And he, he told me, he said, Yep, yeah, he yeah. so is. She she works for her dad. Uh, stepfather, yeah. Yeah. She was pretty as hell, huh? She's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she had those puffy lips she liked, like the hot dog bugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and 18. I was two through. No, but you were only 20. Yeah. 21, right? Or, yeah, 21. Learning crazy already. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, that's crazy. You're really. <laughs> You know, kind of rough, don't you think? Well, you know what? We were the same. That's why we stayed together. <laughs> yeah. So, I know. I mean, we're going to go back a little bit. You know, I know that you're from Atlanta. Yes. Right? Yes. And that you got a scholarship to come to Los Angeles for the Fashion Institute. Which is right around the corner. Yeah. Which one is it called? Fiddle. Freedom, yeah, very popular. Mm -hmm. FIDM. Yes. You know, very popular fashion. They gave you a full ride scholarship, right? Mm hmm. Because you were, you were pretty smart. I, I remember. Sure was. I it, know. That's, that's how I caught you all the time. <laughs> I gotta tell you, <laughs> Dominique was so slick, right? <laughs> she would, come on, you would met, you'd do these lies, right? And you would back them up with two or three people. I mean, it was a genius. <laughs> right? I mean, who the f I never seen anybody do something like that. I was like, well, okay, it must be true. <laughs> right? I mean, come on. You match, you match, man. You're pretty smart. Mm -hmm. So you're really good in school? Yeah, I was really good in school. I got emancipated when I was 15, and um, I got the scholarship, and I came out here on a Greyhound. Um, it took me two, two or three days to get here. And I went to school for a little bit. I managed a store on um, Rodale Drive. And- um, uh, What kind of- uh, it, was, it was a clothing store. Clothing store. I think it was, what, they, what was it called? They folded all those sweaters. I can't remember the name. Limited Express. Okay. And um, then I went over to- You want to hear the craziest thing? What? This came to my mind. Limited Express, right? Uh-huh. That- I had just saw the um, TV series with Epstein, and he was hanging out with the owner of Limited Express. Just got to cross the line. Anyways, go on. Yeah, that's where all the girls Real friendly, friends. real friendly, you know? Yeah, that's where they would have bought their little sweaters. <laughs> but this is, you know, way, way back. Anyways, yeah, way, so way back. Does that nothing to do with this? Keep going. <laughs> and so um, I worked there, and then I went and worked at the Glendale Galleria at a place called Works Fashions. You were 16 then? I mean, when I, did you I, I came here when I was 16, and then I took 15 or 16? 16. 16. And then 15? 16. 16, okay, excuse me. And then I turned 17 um, after I got out here. And, um... But hold on, hold on. You were um, going to the Fashion Institute at 16? 
Yes. Huh? yes. So you already graduated high school? I had already graduated. Wow, really? Yeah. So you skipped a couple grades? Two grades at least? Yeah, they skipped me up two grades. One or two? Two. I knew you were smart. Well, my grandma used to sit me in front of soap operas all day to keep me from getting in trouble. So how do you think I learned all that drama? Really? <laughs> Young and <laughs> restless. One life to live. Drama, no. drama queen. Drama right? queen. So you're in the gallery at 16 working? Yeah, and I was a manager at a clothing store. And, um, you know, I had four other roommates and three, two of them decided to dash. So we were responsible for their rent, me and another girl. And I was like, oh, girl, this is hard. So I started looking through the LA Weekly. I think it was LA Weekly. And I saw something for figure modeling. And um, I was like, this looks like, this is cool, modeling swimsuits and getting paid. But when I went in, it was um, Jim, so. And it wasn't no figure modeling. <laughs> 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 when I first met him, I was like, I couldn't do it. I can't do this. going to kill me. And then he but, goes, but you were 18 then? Or did you have a fake ID? No, I was, I was, I was 18. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a fake ID? <laughs> Say it now. I didn't have a fake ID. I was 18. Right. I was 18. Okay. And so, um, and so he called me two weeks later and said, I have a shoot for um, you for a hustler. And the girl's name was Simone and my name was Dominique. She was French. And um, I did that shoot and then I met this girl, um, Sequoia. So I remember Sequoia. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sequoia, I she, think, is Isla Fox's mom, mom. right? Yes. Uh, I met Isla when she was six. Fuck, really? Yeah, I went over to shoot at her my mom's house, and she came downstairs and made a bologna sandwich or something. You know shit? <laughs> I know. I remember I shot with Sequoia, probably in 93 or something, over there off Sepulveda. And That's where it was. Yeah, that's where yeah. it was? Yeah, it's fucking crazy. And then I see her later, and I'm like, she's like, you don't know me? You know, um, you met me. I'm like, I met you at your mom's. You were six. <laughs> and she can't be when she's 18, 20, whatever? Yeah, she said, you don't remember me? You remember my mom? And I was like, yeah, I know your mom. I think. Who's your mom? And she's like, Sequoia. Yeah. And I said, That's oh, crazy. Right? She's Puerto Rican. Yeah. Part Puerto Rican, she says. Yeah, like you. Sequoia, yeah. yeah. But you want to hear the crazy? Crazy part about that? What? I the Fox. I did her first scene. Ooh. In Black Street Hookers, right? Black Street Hookers. That was yeah. it. Right. That was the one that I on. I did her first scene and she was like, she was shy. She wasn't down. I was like, and then she was like, go. Right, actually, but I had to eat shit. My scene was shitty or she didn't like me, but I was still a nice looking guy, right? So I think she was. <laughs> I think she was shy or whatever. You never know. You know what I mean? She's probably shy. But anyways, keep going. So, um, so yeah, I did my photo shoot, and then I, um, someone, Sequoia asked me if I wanted to do films, and she took me over to Leisure Time, and um, my first scene was with Terry Weigel. What? What? Come on. Yeah. No way. It was with Terry Weigel. No, 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 no. You're. Uh, come on. My first. Terry Weigel did come to about ninety. Four. No, wait, wait, my first scene. No. When I first came into the business, maybe my first scene was with Al. Yeah, it wasn't with Terry. She didn't come to about 94. Yeah, my first scene for Leisure Time was with, um, with Terry. But I worked with, I, I remember we went to shot somewhere. Maybe it was the Vogel Studios or something like that. Uh -huh. And I worked with Al. So your first scene for sure was for Leisure Time or? No, I think, I think it was with Al. Okay. with Al. But with Peter North. Uh, Peter North. The great Peter North. The great Peter North. Because I remember him stopping when during the scene and he went and talked to the director and he said, I think I think she's a little bit younger than you think she is. Really? Because I was so tiny, I remember I was so yeah, tiny yeah. and you know. And he's like, she's too tight. She's like he's like, I don't know, she's old, you know. Yeah. And the guy said, shoot the scene, shoot the scene. The guy should go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Who was the guy? Roy. Roy? Roy. Really? You sure? Roy Yeah, I think it was Roy. Roy Brewington? No, because he didn't there was someone from Europe, or I don't know. Okay. It's, it's been so long. Yeah, no shit, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? There's a lot of this old news. But anyway, so you were working with Al, and he's great, and was it great or what? Did you like him, or was it painful, or what? how was it? It was painful, but it was good. Because I remember you told me you had a boyfriend down there in Georgia at 12 inch dick. So Al don't have no 12 inch dick, so you can hang and bang. Yeah, but still, this still hurts. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you know they put me with Al and I'm with Peter Murphy a lot. Did movies. they? Yeah, especially when we were together. Yeah. Well, I remember one time, mm -hmm. are you ready for this? I was in Spain, remember when I went to Spain? I remember. We were shooting in Ibiza. Ibiza and when Spain. I got back, you know, I don't want to blow his cover, but he said, hey, bro. Oh, he did not. He said, she called me. No. <laughs> you called my brother. Your brother? No, brother Al. Bro oh, okay. my other brother from oh no, 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 no. We were at the Avocado Ranch working, and you know how far that was. And he, he wanted to go home. You know, because he had to take his vitamins and do all this stuff. And I said, why don't you just come and stay on my, you can sleep on my couch, you know? Then you wouldn't have to drive as far. Or let's not, come on, come on, Deidre. <laughs> let's, let's, I let's, did not let, call let, him. Come on. Okay. You, I did not you love, him. you love sex. And I love you. You love sex, but you know, you love sex. We both love sex. And we have to admit to it. I love you more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You and my other ex-boyfriend, Jake Steed, came in, you know, and that was the end of this. That was the end of us. That was the first end or the second end. We broke up about two or three times. Two times. Two solid times. Yeah. Well, one solid time, and then the second time was the, the end, right? The second time was the end. Yeah. I mean, besides that, we broke up a few times, but it was just one big time, and we were broken up for about six or eight months, mm -hmm. right? So that we don't get too far ahead, but let's go. So you're um you do a scene with Peter North. He's great. And did you, and so how much do you remember how much they paid you? I think it was like five hundred dollars. Yeah. That was good money for me. Help with the rent, right? Yeah, I helped with the rent. <laughs> it was easy, right? Yeah. Do you remember Pepe? What was his name? That black guy, Pepe. Or he used to bring girls in too. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh. I don't know if you remember him. But, um, yeah, he used to pay the girls $100. And I'm like, I want all of my money. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And he was ripping the girls off? Yeah, he lived, he lived with a guy named Robert Zadar. Oh, yeah? And, oh, yeah. and he was an actor and on, the, on the beach. And um, he, he put brought girls into the industry as well. But, you know, when we did films, it was, it was cool, you know? It was, it was like we were rock stars. Yeah, know? but you, you know, I remember you. One time we were at the Avocado Ranch, right? And you were fucking a guy with a small dick, Tom Chapman. You know what I mean? Tom I remember, Chapman! <laughs> right? And I, you know, I, I know you're just trying to be a great actress, but I remember I was up in a trailer, so we're at the Avocado Ranch, is a big location we shoot at. Is this like a blooper? Let everybody know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so there's trailers, maybe about a thousand feet away or seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand feet away are trailers, trailers that you ha that you wade in while they're having sex scenes. So I think you're in the garage at the Avocado Ranch. We're up in the trailer, and you're making so much noise. Ah! 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 Oh! Ah! I can hear it from the trailer. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Is it that good? You know what I mean? Well, you yeah. know, it's weird being a, being a couple in the industry, you know. Everybody wanted to be us. Everybody wanted to break us apart. And we were kind of like the, the cool couple, you know? Yeah, we were together for, I think we were a solid 18 months, really. Yeah. So 18 to 20 months. So I mean, it was a pretty serious relationship. We lived together. I lived with you, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't want to get too far. So you um, worked with Al, Peter North, and then you went home and you had 500 bucks and then. And then I. I think that's when I got a call to work for Henry Pochard. He's cool. I love that guy. He and died, you know? He died? Yeah. Oh my God. Wasn't he a cool guy? He was so cool. So cool. And his son... Who was a director. Henry Pochard was a director. Yeah. Famous, well-known director back in those days. He's, he's great. His son um, was dating Angel Kelly. Of course. And I, you know what, tell you the truth? One of the reasons I got in the business... Was well, because of Angel. Because I was jacking off the angle and I thought, oh my God, she makes me crazy. Right, she was so hot. She was pretty, right? Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, I thought so. And her her boyfriend was coming on to me and asking me out. Nathan. Nathan. So so I went to the AVN Awards and she was going down the elevator with Portia, 
Portia, and, Portia and, Lynn. and she gave me this dirty look. They followed me back up. And she said, are you fucking my boyfriend? They're going to beat your ass or what? They don't know who they're they, they, they corded me off. You know, really? And I was like, I didn't even know he had a girlfriend. And then she was like, he didn't tell you about me? And I said, no. She said, well, you know, I'm retiring from the business, and I have this film I'm doing called Even More Dangerous, and it's a sequel to my um, first movie. And I would like for you to play my sister in it. And um, I played her sister in this movie. It was her last, very last movie. Oh, wasn't I in that movie? Even more dangerous. But she was a detective type of she movie? Yeah, and she had a red gown on the cover. All right, I was in that movie. Did you fucked her? No, I wish. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I would have fucked her good, too. I know you would have. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said before, right, uh -huh. since you were talking, like, that I was the best fuck you ever had? Is that true? Yeah. yeah. After all these men, I know you- But, but I was only, I was young when I- Yeah, all right, so now you've had better. You, 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 got, you got me fresh, 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 fresh from Georgia. But I was fresh too. You weren't that fresh. <laughs> you were know, you know, way more- Bro, he's, he's rolling in a Porsche, is that? <laughs> and yeah, you weren't that fresh. Well, you, yeah, but you're right, I wasn't that fresh. But I was fresh. Because you were pretty, you were more with it than me. Yeah. Come on. I was innocent, you know. I I was innocent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But okay, so I was the best fuck you ever had then, or now you've already had much better fucks, or am I still the, the best or one of the best fucks? You know, after you, when I have sex with someone, I have to have like feelings for them. You know what I mean? Because. I mean, what, what I went through with you, it was just like so devastating and I just, I just kind of like, you know, didn't date a lot and then I started dating guys that were models and from, that way from the adult industry. I was done after that. Oh, and then I dated Lexington and then I was really done after that. <laughs> I was like, I'm so done, really? you know, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was just, it's really hard to date. Um, you know, you think you're not going to get jealous, you know, and when you would go to work, I would pop in your videos, and see you would be like, don't kiss, don't kiss, don't kiss, you can't learn it. And so, and I look at the movies, and I kind of get turned on a little bit, you know, I was like, oh. And then I get mad, you know, <laughs> waiting for you to come through that door. <laughs> I can't remember that, really. Yeah, but you would be nice, and you'd be so sweet when you hang out, you know, we'd go to dinner, and, but I still have it in the back of my mind, you gotta keep us kissing. You know, he's kissing Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was my main thing, right? You know, I used to get, used to get mad about that, you know. And I remember who told, no, no, no. The story with Peter North, I know who told you that. It was that girl, um, what was her name, with the big boobs and the red hair, she liked you. Oh, uh, um, Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor. She likes trouble. Remember, remember we had the boxing match? And, and you, you were in a boxing match. We had a boxing match, um, porn boxing match. Oh, yeah. And you boxed Cal Jenner, right? Yeah, no, no, I boxed Biff Halber. Biff Halber, oh my god. Oh, yeah. And I was supposed to box her. Oh, yeah. yeah, but she backed out. Really? Yeah. 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 It was, at, it was at that same night when I hooked up with um, Corey Feldman. He was there, remember? Um, was he there? Yeah, he, he was there. He was I there. was boxing, you know what I mean? So I was trying to yeah, focus. Yeah, you were like, like Rocky over there. I didn't do that good. I won, of course, but I know I could have taken him out if I would have been more focused. But I was broken up with that girl. Which girl? Amy. You know, that girl. Oh, yeah. Look, two years, right? I was with her two years, but I was broken up with her for that month or something. She got you whipped, man, quick. You were still with me when you met her. No. You weren't? No. Mm -hmm. No. Promise. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so she had me off focus. I wasn't with her. And so, but I, know I, I found could, out she was crazy too, though. A little, a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I know I could have taken him out, and that's what pisses me off today. I know I could have taken, because he jumped up every time I hit him with a clean punch and held on for mercy, you know what I mean? <laughs> so really, you know, whatever. But anyway, you know, I needed more experience. So, um, you work and you um, did another scene with Angel Kelly, pretty much? Or? No, I worked with... Um, Cause we were already together when you worked with Angel Kelly. Yeah, we were together when you worked with yep, Angel Kelly. Yep. So, so your next scene would have been with, um, what was that guy's name? He worked all the time, blonde. 
Randy West. Nice guy. He played a, a monster in the movie. In that movie. But no, but we worked before. The next scene after Peter North, you know? Who was it with? Because I know you worked, you were working probably six months before you met me, I'm pretty sure. But I wasn't working that much. No. No. I started working more after we started dating. Yeah. Um, because you would always say to me, this, this is my girlfriend, don't treat her bad, you know, this is my girlfriend. And so, you know, um, we worked together and then a lot of people hired me because, you know, I was your girlfriend and they respected you because you were a good performer and you were professional, you know. Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, I know it was a good performer, but they... Yeah, but they respected your work, your work ethic, uh -huh. you know? And you know about your work ethic. <laughs> no, I didn't play around. You didn't play around at all. <laughs> I, I could barely have you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying what? Yeah, he, he, he said, after 5 o'clock, we can't have sets because I can save my cum shot for tomorrow. <laughs> well, I used to do three or four scenes a day. Yeah. You know, sometimes five. So, five? Yeah, I did five before. Not that often, but, you know, I could. You know, I was strong like that. You know, built like that. Uh, you were. Right? But, um, so, you work... And who, who's the next person? You, you, you I was with you. No, no, no. You want to know why? Because I was in Jim's office and Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels showed me a picture. He goes, Dre, where's the pretty black girls, right? Because there's not, a, there's not a round, right? Who is there? Who is there then? There was Heather Hunter, Janet Jackman. No, Janet Jackman and Champagne were not there. No, 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 no. No, no. Well, Heather Hunter. Heather Hunter. Mm -hmm. Who else? No, Purple Passion. Purple Passion. It was cool as hell. Like, yeah. We chilled a couple times. I never met her. She was really nice. Yeah. Really yeah. cool. Real, real, real sweet. But um, she just kind of, you know, I didn't hook up with her. We were hooked up, but we didn't hook up. You know what I mean? Yeah. We never stayed together a long time. But um, so there was nobody else, pretty much. Yeah. There was just the people don't know. Uh, you know, I like to see, because I helped pioneer black porno. Period. Yes, she did. Right? But people don't know. That in those days, there was hardly any black girls. Yeah, there were. And then so Dre shows me this picture in Jim's office of this girl. I'm like, oh my God, she's pretty, right? She's hot. Because <laughs> yeah, bro, she's pretty nice, right? And he said, you know, she, she's nice. He didn't really. He was very respectful. Yeah, he's I remember, very, he's very respectful. When he spoke about you, he's very respectful, right? Yeah. And I think he's always respectful. Yeah. But I just remember because I was like trying to get some dirt. You know, she's horny, this, that, what? <laughs> Tell me about it. No, she's nice, man. You know, she's cool. So he was like really serious about, you know. Because I went to a party at his house um, when he lived in Hollywood, you know. And um, Julian St. Jocks was a real good friend of his. And, um, you know, he, he was just kind of scoping me out, but I just kind of disappeared. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Did, so you didn't work with him by the time I, we met? No. No. So he, so that's why, because he didn't work with you, but he had a picture. So maybe he was gonna help cast you, because he was always looking out for people to cast. Yeah. He put me in some movies, Girls in the Hood or something, I think. Yeah, that was from, um, what was that? Um, Christian Man. Yeah, Christian Man, video team. Christian Man is the one that started the interracial sets, you know. Well, with his, his company, company. His company. One, one company. company yeah. Because Western Visuals had. And also yeah. contract with them too. Yeah. Don't have it, people don't know, because we're going to go way back. Uh -huh. Right? Western Visuals, Elliot Siegel, yep. had the original Blacks on Blondes. That's Nina it. Tonka. The, no, but he's the one who made that movie. Really? Blacks on Blondes. Everybody said, oh, I made Black. No, no. <laughs> the 80s was Western Visuals, Blacks on Blondes. Really? Yeah. Did you want to know who I saw in there? Oh. Who we hooked up together with later? My bae. Oh my god. <laughs> right. I totally forgot about that. But anyway, the she, she could crush you with her legs. She was strong, right? Stronger than you. <laughs> right, 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 right. But she was, but we, we hooked up. How did that turn out? We hooked up. What do you mean? Did it turn out good? What do you mean? Was it a disaster? Or was, it, was that fun? Or was that mad? Oh, it was good. It was good. We had a three-way, right, with my bay over at Marcus Street Cinema. You were dancing. Oh, yeah. We went back to the hotel. We yeah. hung out all night. And then in the middle of the night, I went over and chilled with her a little by myself, right? Oh, And my you God. got pissed off. Oh, my God. I remember that. Right? Anyway. Oh, so that's so I'm blocked out. <laughs> <laughs> but I had watched my bay 
in the Black Sun Bonds movie, and she has big fat pussy like I like, right? And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! And then we hooked up with her later. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty. Were we surreal. dancing together? I don't think so. I don't think so. But you met her. She was maybe she was living in Frisco. I don't know. Well, I think she was dancing and working at the place where I was dancing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she was working there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense because you were featuring, mm -hmm. and she was. Or this probably about ninety-one, I think. And I told her, I said, my boyfriend just loves you. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, you know, let's look it up. <laughs> she was cool, wasn't she? Yeah, she was cool. My baby, what's up? You were great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it was fun. It was cool, right? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. You were the first guy I ever did a three-way with. No way, really? Yes. Really? Well, yes way. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go searching for those three ways, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you started searching for three ways with Woody Long. <laughs> Actually, like maybe for a serious relationship, but you were out. Always. I wasn't in serious relationships after that, though. But you were always, you know, taking care of what you need to take care of. Yeah. Of the kitty cat. I was a businesswoman. <laughs> <laughs> I was a good businesswoman. So Shawn Michaels said, here's this girl. And I said, oh, man, right? And so that was that. You didn't work with him. But then, I think a month later, we meet at a shoot. Remember, it was a jungle setting? Yes. A steel shoot. It was only it was so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable and dirty. Yes. Right? And I I swear to you, I never had crabs, but I think I had crabs from that place. And I was like, because it was such a dirty... I remember. Right? And I had, I had a weave, and I said, I'm going to have to take my weave out. Remember? It yes. was just such a... Whatever it was, they rolled. Unrolled, whatever they did. Yeah, told. yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Right? And anyway. And then we, we ran to the drugstore to get this stuff. Right? Yeah. But what happened was, we did the shoot. I mean, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, because we did, didn't we? We went there twice. We had to come back the next day. Yes, we did. Something like that, right? We did it. Was it a We did something. Shoots? We were in the rainforest and we were in the rain jungle or something. <laughs> So did we do two different shoots yeah, for this person? Yes, we did. Wasn't his name David? I don't remember, but I know it sucked. David Oliver or David something? Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. Right? Yeah. Something like that. I, I he thought. wasn't even like from here. He was like from somewhere weird. He was, was he from Europe or something? Or was it a European? I don't know. No, because you think of Roy Brunton. Yeah, I keep, I keep going back to Roy. <laughs> right, Roy Brunton, me, you, and Shawn Michaels worked together with Roy Brunton. Three-way? Three-way. No, no, no. Me, you, and Don Fernando. Excuse me. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just do that now. <laughs> that was so funny. I just wanted to be with you, though. It was like, why did they have to throw another like person in there? You know, yeah, you know how it is. Mm. But um, so we worked together, and then I'm gonna pull up the picture. Let me pull up that picture of that one picture. Oh my God. I'm mute. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Actually, there is a picture of me and you at that house. Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> right? That was a still. We can't show that picture. It's extra. <laughs> but we can show this one. Right? And this one's going to oh get my god. This one's going to get to you. That's us in 1990, I think, in Cancun. Oh my god. I want those pictures. Right. Oh my, who was that with us? Nobody, no, that's just me and you, right there. Yeah, and you came and got me from a party. No, 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 that's me and Dominique, right here. 1990, Cancun. Remember that trip? Yeah, we went to see the bull fights. Yeah, right? Yeah. We had a good time, we've gone for like two weeks. I think about a week, but yeah. yeah it was right before AVN. Something like that. Because but I came back dark. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I like it dark. Yeah. And then I did that cover for AVN, and then um, they were like all mad. It was like National Geographic. You know, I said, is really? it like 10 lines? Yeah. You did a cover for AVN? Huh? You did a cover? Yeah, it was for, for, it was for Sets Truck. Oh, yeah, cool. That's great. Yeah, Sets Truck. I love it. Yeah. So, anyways, we meet. I feel like I get confused at. But I know that I, we left the shoot together. So I know we worked together once 
already, and this is the second time we worked together. Mm -hmm. And we go to your apartment in North Hollywood. Um, <laughs> We're going to get to the 30 30. 30 30. All right. A girl, your roommate, is Charlotte. throwing your shit. What's her name? Charlotte. And I saw her before, right? So we saw each other. Nice butt. Once or twice. She had a nice butt? Yeah. She looked pretty cute. Yes, yeah, If was. I remember, she looked like she was horny too. Yeah. Was she? Yes, yeah, she was. She was like, hey. She didn't really say, hey, hey, but she was like, I saw the eyes, I was like, yeah. But anyway, she's throwing your shit off the balcony. Yeah, because you were there. No. No, no, no. We came home. I was bringing you home to your apartment. I wonder what she was doing now. She's throwing your shit off the balcony. And you, I ain't the one. I ain't the <laughs> one, bitch. You started attacking her, right? <laughs> right? You guys started fighting in the apartment, right? Oh, I remember that. Right? You're like, ah! <laughs> Get down. I think you got the best of her, probably, for sure, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, this is, that's fucked up. So I said, you can come with me. Yep, and I'm going to live with you. And, you. and I was like, I didn't know what I got myself into. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know any better. I just know, man, she's so hot. She's so pretty. You have a good personality too. Oh, thank you very much. You know, so you. I mean, yeah. we had a good. We had fun. We had a chemistry pro. Yeah. We had a, probably had some serious chemistry yeah. when you think back on it. We did. You know what I mean? But um, it was such a long time ago, thirty years over, not about twenty years ago. Yeah. But um, you come stay with me. But yeah, then uh, you were Af African lover, right? Yeah, we had the Warner Center. Yeah. What? Yeah. And then we got a roommate in there. Oh. Jamie. Yeah. Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee. Right, right. Since you look like Jamie Lee Curtis, but you went by Jamie Hi. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, we got a few roommates in there. We got Buck Adams. No, no, no. Buck came to my other place over there in uh, Reseda. In Reseda. Yeah. But I got back with you when Buck was your roommate. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I, I beat up the guy, and then they, and when I came back, they fucked up my apartment or something. Yeah. You remember that at all? Anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buck took off. I was I busted this guy up real. I remember. I remember. Anyways. Do you remember when I slammed your car in reverse? Oh on yeah. The freeway? Oh yeah. Do you wanna tell everybody? But I don't even know what the fight was about, you know? You I don't even know what we were fighting about. Um Okay, let's get let's get real serious here. Let's get serious. So we were working for the weird looking guy with a really white skin, long hair, brown hair, kind of black hair. John? No, he was a real skinny looking guy working at his house or something. And so we came back from his house and maybe you were flirting with somebody, I don't know. Something was going on. I don't know. You, you slant? Shit. <laughs> Shit, please. <laughs> please. Everybody, come on, I'm not just imagining things. Don't. You're a little jealous, you know. No, you were in flirt with everybody. <laughs> This happened twice. You did it to oh, my... I remember who the guy was. Who? He was this young guy. No, no, no. He wasn't young. This was a... Well, he wasn't a good-looking guy. This guy was just the guy at the house. I just remember that house. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but um, you were driving... You did it to, to two of my cars. Yeah, ironically. One of them was... The car they car. were both on the same street. Both on Canoga <laughs> Avenue, one was just farther down. The Camaro and the Corvette. Exactly, the Z28 I had. And I ended up with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're driving back, I said, I'm going to break up. I said, this is it. we're going to break up, right? That's what I said. Because we were, look at you, get mad, right? Because <laughs> you were flirting with a guy. We, were, we did argue a lot. I said, you got to break up with me. Right. <laughs> you slammed <laughs> my brand new bet. Yep. I'm just a young guy, you know what I mean? I got money. I, got, I saved my it was, money. It was the maroon one, right? Right, yeah, it's beautiful with the gold wheel, the mm -hmm. PBS wheels, mm -hmm. convertible, right? Mm -hmm. Right there at, no, no, actually, you had the Camaro on Canoga. This was on Winnetka and Roscoe. Wow, you have good memory. Winnetka and Roscoe. But you, you had no damage. No, but you ripped off my turn signal, too. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And so then, I'm like, you're attacking me, right? Come on, you're attacking me. You're pretty, she's a lot stronger than you know. <laughs> Even Jake Steve told me after he said, man, I felt the punch. Because you punched him. And I know he's a monster. <laughs> I knew Jake was strong, you know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, <laughs> that's another story we had to talk about. 
Right? So anyway, so I run back. Well, I push you out. You're like, ah, help! Right? I like, you know, I finally get you off my car. I take off. And I don't know what happened. Did I make it back home? You made it back before I did. <laughs> or so, oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah, I went to the man that said I need to get my stuff, but I didn't have the key, remember? Oh, yeah. We just, we were at a different place. And I was waiting for you at the door. <laughs> no, you <laughs> took all my clothes. And burned And you put them on the stove and set the whole apartment complex on fire. No, no. Somebody saw smoke coming out of the uh, windows and they pulled the fire alarm. And I went to jail. Deidre, you took my leather jacket. All I bought it. No, no, you bought me the one afterwards when you said you felt bad. Cause you you don't head. break up with a girl after she takes you shopping. You just don't do that. No, that, no, 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 no. You, you, you replaced it, the one you burnt. That's what you did. And you felt bad because you burnt. You took I, all I my clothes. I, remember, I think I remember it differently because I wouldn't put your clothes on the stove for nothing. You put the clothes on the stove. And it wasn't even the ones that did it. It was like one of those like. Gas oh. ones. It's an old city apartment. Yeah. You turned it on full blast and. And then three fire engines came. It was serious because you almost burned the whole place That's down. That's the first time I've ever been to jail. Yeah, I think so. No, because they took you to jail one time when you bit me. Oh, you went to jail too? Yeah, we both went to jail. Yeah, they had us both in this, next to each other because we wouldn't stop arguing. They said, shut up. Okay, we're going to take you both in. And they let us both out at the same time. <laughs> what's the, what's the <laughs> point, right? <laughs> Those are different days, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. And then, how about this one crazy time? This was in that same apartment, right, that you burnt down? I, I definitely remember that story. <laughs> that was really scary. Yeah, but you were really, um, you were really upset with me. I mean, you didn't understand that um, I'm a country girl. I, I wasn't used to, you know, when you love someone, you're with that person. But I had to realize we were in porn, you know? And, and you know, that's just the, my mentality, the way I was born. And um, it, just, it was just hurtful to even see you with anybody else, you know? And they, they put us together sometimes, but not a lot. Two or three times, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, who wants to see a boyfriend and girlfriend have sex, you know? Yeah, I mean, no matter they, what. They like the drama more than anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, other than that part of the industry, we, we did a lot of fun things. We went to, um, remember you took me to that place um, where they, we ate the chicken and we saw the guys on the... Um, horses. Oh, yeah. yeah, down yeah. in Buena Park. Yeah, you took me to the um, the Hearst Castle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we did a lot of fun things together. We went out to the fishing one time. Yeah. In the lake, that middle of that frozen ass lake right yeah. on your mammoth. Yep, yep, yep. We were skiing. We went skiing. We yeah. went skiing too? Yeah, we went skiing. <laughs> so, you know, you were, you were quite the gentleman. Um, you know, like when you would work a lot, but you would make it up to me by taking me on, you know, we'd go on vacations and two, two weeks sometimes, and you'd, you'd give me my time, you know? But I, I think what ruined our relationship was that there was just so much jealousy. Everybody wanted to fuck you. You know, and you were a horn dog and you were fucking girls in the bathroom before your scenes and after. I found out later, you know? I would never do that. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> Yes, you would. And, um, you know, I was just, I was just like really hurt, you know. But um, I ended up, you know, meeting a really cool chick in my building and she kind of helped me through it. When we broke up? For yeah, when I was over on Sepulveda at the Grand. I that, that was quite a breakup, too. Well, I remember, too, that you were also behind my back going out with Corey. Corey? I, was, I knew Corey before I knew you. I knew yeah, Corey. but he's a nice looking guy. He was nice, and we were broken up that time. We were broken up. That's, ah, when, that's, when, yeah. that's when we had broken up for six or eight months, and he was a stripper. And I was, that's when I had that Jeep that you were supposed to teach yeah. me how to drive. Uh -huh. And I saw him going up the street, and I just jumped out the car and ran after him. You know? What? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, come meet my parents. And um, like years later, I ran into him, and he was married to, um, what was her name? Um, Cal Chandler's ex-wife. Um, oh, Jill, he married Jill Kelly? Jill Kelly. He did? Yeah, he started, he was um, directing movies. Yeah, but, but you were messing with 
with Corey. He's a nice guy, but you're messing around with him. No. And he's no, a good no, looking no, guy, no. so I'm not no, gonna no, blame listen, you, listen, you know what I mean? Listen, listen. I was dating his his girlfriend's sister. His girlfriend's Vanity from Vanity Sits with Prince. And he dated her sister Patricia. So he thought that she was cheating on him, you know? With what? That, well, she thought that he was cheating. She, she Corey thought he was cheating on him? Cheating on him with this new guy and his, um, this new guy that came along after Prince. I don't remember what his name was, but, you know, kind of looked like him, you know? I can't remember his name. And so he used to take me and we used to like go stalk the house. And he used to say, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that motherfucker's there. You know, and so really? yeah, oh, that's funny. and he he danced in Orange County, and I would go and see him dance. You know, and um, <laughs> and, and and come on, it's, it's all good. It's, a, it's okay. Yeah, it was fun. You know, yeah, um, you fucked him. Yeah, I fucked him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he was cute. You know, and and we're still friends. We're still yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah, we're still friends. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he got married, but before he got married, we, we hung out a little bit. Really? He gave you some dick the other day? Not the other no, day. Five years ago, ten years ago? Maybe like four. Really? Yeah, three. Three? Yeah, he looks, he looks a lot different now. You know? Yeah, we're all getting older, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's in really good shape, and um, he, he got more serious, you know? And, and he had a son. His son was 18, spinning image of him when he was younger. And um, yeah, so it was pretty cool. So you you guys are kind of with it a little bit, see? You still got a little we busted, man. We, we were friends. We were friends because I ran into him because the girl was at my house. She wanted me to shoot her pictures, and then she figured out who I was, and she said, "I have somebody that's been looking for you." And I said, "Who?" And she said, "It's a surprise." So she called him, and um, it was Corey. And I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen you in so long. It happened years. And um, didn't he go out with another girl that, um, I don't know. Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was another girl he dated. Her husband was a producer. That's where it started. Shannon, Sh um, what was mm -hmm. Jay Shanahan's um, wife. Sh yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, they were friends from way back. Yeah. Brittany. Ta um, Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany. Right. Anyway, so it's, it's all about you mostly. This is what, I mean, it's all about you today, really, me and you. So, so you were, um, let's go back. So you, we work together, right? You fight this girl. We're on the balcony, and I take you home, and we're hanging out. And then you start working more, you say. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, I remember we were watching movies, and I liked um, Randy Spears. Remember? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you like Randy Spears, but Randy Spears was a good yeah, looking guy. Was, and he was a, and then I, and okay I, performer, but good looking guy yeah. and very popular, good actor. So so we, I would watch their movies and, um, you know, I remember watching Randy Spears and, you know, sometimes she would take me to the set with you and you would say, this is my girlfriend. And, you know, I just started working more, but I think that I really started working more after we broke up the first time, huh? you know, because um, that was for a long period of time. And that's when I kind of went through a transformation. And I'm going to get my boobs done. That when I was done. Yeah, and yeah, the fact was that your boobs, when you, they were bees, but so, so nice bees. You were, they were so beautiful, your natural breast. You were very pretty. You didn't need a nose job. You were pretty, you know what I mean? Anyways, you're, um, I always said those boobs are really great. And I told you, if you, if you get those boobs done, I'm out. And what you came back. <laughs> I felt bad. The way we broke up, I, I felt No, we, we, we broke up pretty, it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. bad. Um, but um, I started working more after um, I had, had the surgery because I worked for Greg Dark. And then he started putting me in his legitimate films. And I met, I met a girl on one of the shoots and she said, you know, why don't you get your boots done? Get your nose done. And I remember I did and I walked. And we had a casting call, and I walked by you, and you looked at me like you were disgusted. With your face? <laughs> really? Yeah, you, looked, you didn't even speak to me. Yeah. And you were trying to get with the, the other girl, a really new black girl. Um, what was her name? She's pretty. Really? Um, I can't remember her name, but she did a box cover for like 
Wicked, you know, like freaked out booty or something like that. Um, She's really pretty. Oh. And you're really? you're you're kind of hanging with her. And um, are you I'm sure? sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, she she got out of business pretty quick. Yeah, but um, you're kind of hanging with her. At least that's what I was told. You know. I don't remember. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you think I remember? I have good memories. So I can't remember. See, she must not have been that memorable, I guess. Yeah, she was memorable. She was? Yeah, she, she did a lot of covers for Video Team, a lot of the Baby Got Backs. And um, and she stopped working. I think she was involved in that that, that AIDS epidemic, and she she just stopped, disappeared, and stopped working. Um, but I don't remember. That was Jordan McKnight? Jordan McKnight. Oh, I never dated her. Matter of fact, Jordan McKnight didn't even like me. One time, I give you a quick rundown. Seymour Butts, and this was way after, um, way after we were broken up, way, way after. Seymour Butts brought her on the set, and I worked with her in the scene, and I was so in, yeah, she was pretty as hell. I was so into her, right, that I ravished her beyond belief. <laughs> you know, the scene was insane. I was just like, you know, like he just gave me some food, right? <laughs> And I don't think she was ever ravished like that. That I was just crazy for her. And she would never work with me again. Why? Because I was too strong. Isn't that crazy? She, uh, I wouldn't even say I was rough. I was just strong. I mean, I just was, you know, sometimes I could turn to a maniac, right? Okay. I was not rough. I was just, she liked more gentle. You were aggressive in bed. I was very aggressive. I got even more aggressive. Yeah, it's time went on. Oh. But um she, she, women. But no, I never went out with her, but she was beautiful. She was, she was very beautiful. beautiful. Right. She was beautiful. Mm -hmm. She was great too. Great body, great skin tone. She had it all. Uh, you liked your sister? She liked Milton Ingley. Ugh. Right? She fucked I Milton. I know, they got together. She man. fucked Milton Ingley and you used to that studio. And looked at me and said, Fuck you and she came out naked after she had come dripping out of her. Something like that, right? And I'm like Oh, that doesn't make sense, but what am I, <laughs> what am I gonna say? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm Titi Boy. Yeah, exactly. I'm Titi Boy, man. I'm a popular guy. Do you remember that scene we did um, for NYDP Blue and you played a cop? I remember. And then you were throwing me in jail. Right. And you really played that part well. Huh? You know? Cause, but, cause I thought it was a good scene, but you did a great job. Yeah, because we were both angry at one another. <laughs> well, well, you know, the truth is, you gotta know. Working with your girlfriend, you know, is a lot more complicated for me and most people than working with a different girl. Why is that? I think that, you know, because you have an emotional connection, mm -hmm. you know, and the pressure's on you and... And, and it has to be good. Is it, it has to be good. You know, so there's a lot of different variations. Yeah, that was, there, was, there was a lot of pressure on us. Yeah, so... But you did great, you, you moaned your ass off. You, I mean, you were the loudest moaners I ever met in my life. No, Terry Wang was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to work with her, unfortunately. Yeah. And she was beautiful too, very pretty, huh? I remember when you were sitting behind me with your girlfriend at the adult video awards, and I left. I was right. so upset. Do you remember that? I won awards, I won a couple awards. Yeah, and you were sitting right behind me with your girlfriend. I can't remember. I remember being there with her. But I didn't know you were behind. I was in front of you. You're in front of me. Okay. <laughs> oh. I yeah, it was very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And you left? I left. Oh. Yeah. That was '94. Yes, I remember it was. that. Oh, no, no, it was the '94 award. That was in '95. Yeah. January '95. I remember that award because it was a, it was a good sex scene I did with Sierra. Mm -hmm. For the we were in Mexico trip. Yeah. You know, so it was the best sex scene. But it was it was fun. So, but I remember that. I think I won another award, but, I, you know. How it's going. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so you did, so after we broke up, you did a lot of work? I worked a lot. I, I remember, after we really broke up, I thought you did the most work. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. The, the, the real breakup in 1992, in um, pretty much April of 92, right mm -hmm. around that time, mm -hmm. is when we broke up. Yes. Right? And, um, and I had just bought a Jeep. You're supposed to teach me how to drive it. You never did. I had to teach myself how to drive I it. I think Corey teaches you. Yeah. Thought you right. And then your truck. Remember your bad truck that you had? Someone stole your truck in front of my house. Uh, did you know about that? I don't know what happened with that later, but I know. 
But it was just, raining for like four months straight. And you know, we went outside to get a little truck and it was gone. Somebody told me you had it, somebody steal it. <laughs> oh, please. But I would say, why would she do that? Yeah, why would I do that? I mean, because you liked me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or loved me, whatever. Right? Yeah, I loved you. And we were going to get something to eat. Something <laughs> They stole my truck. Yeah, someone stole your truck. Like, it, was, it was a big monster truck. It was like... I had was, no insurance, and I never, it was they lost. Right? That was pretty crazy. But we had been at my house for about three days, so someone could have staked it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was sad. On Moore Park. Moore Park and Woodman. Woodman. Yeah. But I got a good man. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I didn't like that. You know, getting my truck stolen. <laughs> yeah, but you still had your permit. <laughs> yeah, probably right. Yeah, and probably a motorcycle and something else too. <laughs> a scooter <laughs> for the water or something. Yeah. yeah. But you, you tell me how to save money. You, when you worked, you would take a portion of your check and put it in the bank, and you would only keep the, some money in your pocket for dinner, you know. And you really taught me how to save money because you know I could go crazy with money. And that's what I really admired about you, you know, you were very responsible, you paid your bills on time, you know, you weren't out spending on spending sprees and, you know, you were just very responsible, you know, I learned a lot from you. And I think I probably wouldn't have been as big of a name as I was if it wasn't for you, because a lot of people would have probably taken advantage of me and they were scared of you, you know, so he's like, this is my girlfriend, don't mess her over. And I'm like, okay, Titi. So, you know, I, I think that you were a very big part of why I was able to work for some of those companies that didn't really hire African-American girls. You well, know? well, yeah. So it kind of maybe, you know, maybe since you were with me, it made it cool well, to uh, hire you, you think? I mean, because you were well, pretty, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, you were the top porn star in the world, and, you know, your girlfriend was black, and, you know, I mean... More, made it more acceptable, you think? I mean, you think? I, I don't know if it made it more acceptable, but I, I just thought that they were kind of like, um, I don't know, just baffled by it, like, you know, really? that we got together. And I, I don't think people like think thought you like black girls, you know? I, you know what, I, I sometimes think that. I mean, you were very, you're hot, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't change the fact that you were hot. That's, you were pretty, you were hot, you had personality, you knew how to dress so nice. I remember that one black dress yeah. that had the little hooks here. Yeah, yeah. You looked so beautiful in that dress. It was great, right? Yeah. And um, that, you can't take that away. So, yeah. and you did great scenes. So maybe since that you're that's the breakthrough of interracial sex. Yeah. Maybe since you're with me, maybe they said there's a pretty black girl. Let's throw her in there, and they say, oh, she's great. And so maybe oh, she's great. She's great. Everybody knows. So maybe that helped. Maybe yeah, it did help. Maybe. But, yeah, I mean, it, it was a different time. I was way back. Yeah. You know, so, so anyway. But I mean, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, well, it's the truth. Oh, thank you. And, and I tell everybody that, you know? I tell everybody that. So, but, it, you know, it's, it was just really difficult, you know, being, because I really loved you, and I, I just couldn't see you having sex with all those girls. And you were working all the time. Every day, pretty much. Every day, three, four times a day. Sometimes I wouldn't even wait for you, like, all day at the house by myself. And you're not that th type of girl either. Uh, <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> yeah, and I would be sad. And, um, you know, but you come in and you say, hey, let's go and get some dinner and, you know. It was cool. It was cool, but you know, I was young. We were young. We were both young. Very close, same age. Very close. So you started working a lot. Did you love the business? What, what did you think of it? Um, I liked working. Um, I liked dancing, going on tour. This is a quick man. Remember, I still remember that Marcus Street Cinema paid you eighteen fifty for the week, and then you got tips. Yeah. That's pretty much right, right? Yeah. Tell me that's not a great memory. We were excited. I didn't take your money. 1850 but... is nothing, you know. No, but you know, it was. Uh, yeah. But back then, it's. 50 with tips. But with the tips, that's 10 grand, you know? Yeah. Yeah, those guys tipped. <laughs> but I never really, I just remember the number you were getting paid, and I, was, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. You were excited to get those features. 
Yeah, I, yeah, because the, um, um, I opened up doors for other girls that had never been booked at other African American girls that had never been booked at those clubs. Did you help them? Did you help get some girls in there? You're saying? We all else the first, yeah. you know. Well, oh, Angel Kelly didn't go there. Um, there's there's a few places I danced where I was the first black feature. Uh, it's Market Street Cinema or other places? Oh, not Market Street Cinema. Yeah, 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 they yeah. had all kinds of sisters in there. Mm -hmm. But like in te in um, te Dallas, Texas, they had a place there. Um, you know, they took me out to Paris and I worked out there. Really? Yeah. How was that? It was different. Yeah. It was different because um, their their starts were different than ours. You know. And they were, the, I worked for the Italians, you know, and they were very it, aggressive. You worked for the Italians in Paris? Yes. Paris, France? Yes. They were very, very much into the anal. And, you know, when I went there, they said, I don't do anal. They were like, you don't do anal? Like I said, I didn't do girls. Oh, my God. <laughs> but they kept me there. And, um, you know, it was just, it was a lot of fun, you know. Okay. And I went to the, um, the, the, what was the porn award? Cons? Yeah. Cons. Yeah. And then I got my little crush on Rocco. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rocco's great. He, yeah. was, he was like Sylvester Shalom over there. Yeah. Really? He was a family everywhere. And um, I, I had a boyfriend at the time. He was a model. And we were on the cover of the paper um, because the paparazzi was chasing us. And he turned around and gave him the finger. And they were like, um, American hospitality. And I was like, that's crazy. But yeah, I, I, it, was, it was a lot different there, you know, like during the day, porn was on, you know, and they didn't understand what I was saying, and I didn't understand what they were saying, and I would ask them for douches, and they would like, say, douche, douche, I said, douche for me, couche, you know, <laughs> you know, and it was, it was just, it was just different, you know, um, a lot different than the U.S., they work here a lot harder. Oh, yeah. And I've seen a lot of movies at a dub where I'm speaking French. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it seems to me like, a, you know, because we were so young, there's no internet, there's hardly any information unless you're really studying history and grabbing books about Paris. You don't hear Paris, France, oh. I mean, it seems yeah. so um, exotic, kind of. Well, because we were there at the same time with the, um, with the other actors, because they had the content festival and they had the award shows. You know, so... No, but it must have been really exciting, right? It was really, really exciting. But, you know, it was difficult for me because all the girls there would, like, take their tops off, you know? And I'm like, they're like, take off your top. And I'm like, you know, you can take off your top because you're a B, you know? I'm a double D, you know? And then all these guys start flashing pictures, you know? So I just kept my top on, you know? Really? Yeah. But, know? I mean, you're a pretty free-spirited girl. Well, but, like, I was kind of shy, though. I was kind of shy. Uh, was oh, like, yeah? Were you? Yeah, I was really shy. I was really shy. Um, really? Yeah. Huh? I was. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's a long time ago. And, I, you know, I just remember certain things. I know that you were horny. And always horny. Always horny. Very horny. So when was the first time you had sex? How old were you? Twelve. Well, yeah, it's me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's ironic, right? Yeah. How was it? Tell me about it. It was rushed because parents were coming home yeah. and um, painful and rushed. And I was like, this is what this is all about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a lot of sex when I was in school. I was, I was, a, I was a good girl. I think when I came up to California, it's when that freak part came on. Really? Because I remember you told me I had a boyfriend at 12 inch dick, worked for the music company. Yeah. Right? And that you and Bobby Brown fucked in uh, Atlanta or something like that. Yeah, he pulled me up on stage um, for one of his concerts and he's saying, I want to love you, baby. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you went back to his, his place? Uh, and I went back to his. Um, you know, where they were in the backstage, you know, his trailer. Oh, he had sex there? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> you put it down? Yeah. And, you know, I ran into him here. And I, and I told him, I said, do you remember me? I said, he pulled me up on the stage and sang to me, West Virginia, you're with Karen White and LaVert. And I said, and I told him about everything. And he was like, oh, my God. I said, I can't believe. You remember? You remember it. I ran into him 
about two months, two years ago, I was talking with some friends in, um, over there in Tarzana, the little mm -hmm. Mexican restaurant. Um, the one that's in the mall, shopping mall? No, 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 it was on Ventura Boulevard, just, uh, I can't remember, Los Coyotes, I can't really remember the name, but it's right there at, at, uh, near Tampa and Ventura, mm -hmm. it was there. And so I asked him about some of the girls that he had sex with. Not you, you know, because I didn't know he had sex, but you know, he told me some stories, you know. Oh, yeah. He told me some some girls that you would think would be good, but they weren't. Weren't, which is wild, right? Yeah. And he said, you know, he said it was great. Cool. Yeah. She's gonna check me. I took her to that hotel. That's when they were filming. It's a thin line no, no, between no. love and hate. The other Janet. Janet. I, I can't. You know, I mean, I'm not really liberty to say oh, this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But Janet, the Janet. real Janet. Oh, my Janet. My Janet that I love, love, love. Probably. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm... I don't know. Try a piece of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big fan. Uh, right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. she seemed like she was pretty cool, right? Yeah. But yeah. That's all I'm saying. So, um, so he had sex with Bobby and he was cool. He put it down. That's good. And he put it down. So then, um, that, how many guys did you have sex with before you came to California? Because you were only 16 when you came to California. Which is really trippy. Maybe about three or four. Really? Yeah. Remember, I have a story, right? Oh my goodness. All right, that you told me. Okay, tell Crazy me. Crazy ass story. I think it was your brother. But he used to, he was sticking the needles in your ass and he sticker, sticker, sticker. Oh, my uncle. Your uncle, sticking with needles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I used to, I used to like, I used to tell him all the time. And he took, he did that to me. Yeah. What did he do? Tell me. He he tied me to my to the, my baby bed and had and stuck straight pins in my butt and had my cousins cheering. <laughs> <laughs> like what's the song? Sticker, sticker, sticker. Yeah, yeah, sticker, sticker, sticker. Yeah. Did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt. Hell yeah, it hurt. Yeah. When I got in trouble about some serious shit. <laughs> Uh, you know, but um, he, he was he was, he was great. You know, but he was just crazy to tell. Oh, he was cool. Yeah, he was cool. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you told me about your mother, and I remember. And so, how was your childhood? Um, my childhood was pretty good. Um, I was raised by my grandmother. She was a very very strict Christian, so I wasn't allowed to go a lot of places. So that's why they were sitting in front of that TV in front of the Search for Tomorrow and the Young and the Restless. And they were sitting there with timetables, you know, one through 10, oh, you know? Cool. So, so and when I switched through those timetables, I could get up. But you know, I learned a lot from Young and the Restless. <laughs> you like the drama? Well, you know, they made me drama. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I came from a pretty good family. And, um, but your mom wasn't there to take care of you, grandma? My, my grandmother took care of me, and then I moved to West Virginia. And, um, you know, my mother, she wanted to take over from the spot where I was, like, younger, you know? She, she, I was a teenager, you know? And, um, you know, we had, we had our run-ins, and then I, I went and became emancipated because, you know, I was very mature for my age. And then I worked two jobs when I was in high school, and um, and I graduated from school early. And the first thing I wanted to do is get the hell up out of there, Charleston, West Virginia. I remember you told me another story. In that I think it was Charleston, West Virginia. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that a girl came into the Wendy's hamburger or something, or the Burger King. Oh, the fight! And they called you the N word. Yeah, we had a fight. You stabbed her or something. I stabbed her with a fork. Oh, so no. No big deal. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I mean, she deserved it, right? She should call me the end of her. Right. And it was, she was with her mother. Yeah, it was like crazy, right? Yeah, they were in the back of the van or something. Who does that? Crazy people that don't know I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right, because they don't know they just signed a death warrant. <laughs> just came to me right now that when we were going out, you used to hang out with Taylor Wayne. Taylor Wayne, right? You guys are going. I say, what's going on? You're like, rawr, rawr. I was like, no, well, she's well, really, there's some guys in the in the room. <laughs> and you were like, no, there's no guys. No, she talked like the black girl, hey girl. And I talked British. 
What do you guys about? We were, tearing the town up. No, we would just go to like all the clubs, like you know, um, Carlos and Charlie's and no, you know. no dancing. No, I mean in other states where you're doing. Yeah, we would dance and stuff. She was one of my really good friends. She's a really nice person. And Mimi Miyagi was one of my really good friends too. She was cool. She was. She was sexy, but Taylor was super nice. I mean, I know Taylor. She was such a personal person. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice person. Taylor. Yeah. Those are like the only two friends that I really had, right? Then you had Anne Marie for a second, right? Anne Marie, and then I had um, Alicia Rio. Alicia Rio, really? Yeah. Huh. Not too many girls. No, not too many. I didn't hang out with too many girls. Oh, you like the guys? No, I just, I just didn't. The huh? girls just, I just didn't. I don't know. Yeah. They were very jealous and it's just lots of drama, you know? Mm -hmm. But Solana Sands. She was know. really good. You ever speak to her? Um, I saw her about five years ago. Where was she at? She was in Pasadena. She had kids, you oh, know? She was like, a very nice person. Yeah. Very she sweet. had that big old nice booty. Yeah, people yeah. love their booty. Yeah. Yeah, she, she was just very nice though. When you talk about really nice people, mm -hmm. Lana Sands is really, really nice. She really was. Really. She really so was Taylor was. Wayne, but Lana Sands was really nice. You yeah. know, you know, like Janet Jackman, she was cool. I love Janet Jackman. That was my best friend. I love Janet Jackman. Oh, still? Yeah, she used to do my hair. She used to oh. have Hunter's hair. I love Janet. Yeah, for sure, I want to get her on here, man. I love Janet. Are you kidding me? Yeah. We had a, a hell of a chemistry, too. Oh, I didn't know that. She told me. I think she did tell me later on. Yeah. I mean, we, Remember when she lost all that weight and everybody got mad? You know? Uh, kind of. But, yeah, yeah. But Janet Jackman's, yeah, one of the best ever. I love yeah, that. She's yeah. great. She's Do you great. still talk to her then? Um, I haven't talked to her for a while, but we used to go on tour together. Um, she's my best, best friend. Yeah, she's so cool. She's another person, in my opinion, that was uh, along the same very, lines as very Lana down Sands. Down. Very, very down sweet. Down to earth and sweet. But for me, Lana Sands was great, but not, it didn't, I didn't have the chemistry. The chemistry I had with Janet was pretty serious. Yeah. She was, she was, I mean, Janet's yeah, great. She's a and nice she didn't person. girl either, but she didn't yeah. girl she was me. Yeah, I remember, I remember Janet talking about you when we were up there for Alex Lorenzi back over there, you know, in San Francisco, in Nevada, with Alex's yeah. house. And she was talking, oh, Dominic's close. Like, no, she's, she's crazy, you know what I mean? And this is when we were already broken up, right? But now I understand. She really had your back. Yeah. I didn't know you, you were that tight with her. Yeah, she, she did my hair. For every box cover. I remember you paid $400 for your hair in 1990. Yeah. And you were, I was like, that's a lot of fun. Did I make money. you pay for it? <laughs> I think so. I mean, yeah. I might have helped. Maybe yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. But um, yeah. No, I just remember that um, it seemed like a lot of money back then. Yeah, it was a lot of money. And it's even more now. That was really? a thousand. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. But yeah, Janet was cool, but a lot of sense. Yeah, I want to get Janet on here, so maybe she can get touch Yeah, I'll get a hold of her. I mean, we're, we're cool. Super cool. She worked for my company two or three times. Yeah, yeah, she told me. And I saw her, and you know, we talked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Janet's the best ever. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. Yeah. Always nothing but love, super love for Janet. Yeah. And but Lana's nice too. So if you hear it from Donna, maybe you can help me. Yeah. Lana, people love Lana, and she was always cool. Mm -hmm. And she was always just a nice person. Yeah, she's a nice person. Well, yeah. But we, you know, we had a lot of nice people in the industry the back then. We were like, you weren't a rock star unless you dated a porn star. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what it was like. We were like, we were like rock stars. You I think, know, I we think had we had dialogue. We did actual acting. You know, we had actual box covers and we're on the covers with our booties sticking out looking back. You know, we had beautiful, like, Playboy style box covers, you know? And we had real scripts. Remember the real the movie we did for, um, it was a, it went to um, HBO. Um, you, it uh -huh. was Buck Adams' movie, uh -huh. the, the, the legitimate film. Well, he did a lot of good, Lethal Passion? And Lethal that, Passion. That one? Yeah. I played Shawn Michaels' wife in that. Really? Yeah. yeah, with me and Buck from Gangsters and yeah. we were shooting somebody yeah, or something. Yeah, that was on HBO. Really? Yeah. Oh, I know that. Buck was cool, yeah. Yeah. You should, you should go get that movie. You did a good job in there. Yeah? You were always serious about your acting. Oh, I was nominated for the Best Supported Actor. Oh, excuse me. Right, but they didn't give it to me, but yeah. Well, who won? 
don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, well, it was great though, you're right. It was just... You always won. You had to give it to somebody else. Well, I didn't win the acting awards. They, I won the sex scenes. The sex scenes, yeah. You know, form of the year, sex scenes, all that stuff. Yeah, but um, you're right. It was like really, it was way more mysterious, way more prestigious to be a porn star in those days, in my opinion. Remember we used to go to ADN and it used to be like, we were like, everybody would be just standing to the side watching us walk in, you know, like we were going to the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> the red car, but it was great. Yeah, it was fun. It was the best. It was really nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't, there's so many people today that can, the actors, let's say, they don't, they're not natural. So now you can have so many actors because they can mm -hmm. just take, you know, help from the pharmacy and you know, they get erections. Yeah. But you know, it's not so easy for the performers to perform without any type of help and the yeah. know, big yeah. sets and but all you that. you did. <laughs> oh yeah, I could do it. You could do it. Yeah. But um, I, I guess it would be a little bit more difficult now, you know? Um, no, it's not difficult now. It's easier because everybody gets help. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's easier now since they have all these little things that they can do. But, but I don't think like the... Um, the prestige is the same, do you? That's like you're telling me it's not the same, right? It's not, it's not the same. I, I think the business has changed a lot. Um, I thought it was about a lot classier when we did it. The actresses were, they were classy. It was like Raquel Darian, remember Raquel Darian? Unbelievable, she's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful you know, girls. That's ironic, because I thought that she, for sure, she was one of the prettiest ever. And you thought so too? Yeah, I thought so too. Body, face, demeanor. Yeah. yeah. Her boyfriend was a punk, but um, she was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what was the other girl's name? She had the, um, it's um, Jay Shetterhand's wife. Paula Price? Paula Price. I yeah. talked to her the other day. You did? I was going to get her on here, but she chickened out at the last Are minute. Are you serious? Oh my God, I love Paula Price. She's beautiful, right? Yeah. Am I wrong? She was really pretty. She was really, really pretty. Yeah, and during that time when we would go to ADN, um, we had a lot of like big stars, you know, yeah. like really big stars, you know. Now girls still do like two movies and they're like, I'm a porn, I'm a porn star. I'm like, no, you're a porn no star. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple. I guess there's one really popular girl. There's two popular girls that come to my mind that I know that are very popular. Mm -hmm. Is Riley Reed and Angela White. Wow, because I thought you said Misty Stumon or the other one. Um, just a big, tall girl. Um, I never did talk to any of the um, newer girls because they, they they were just like very like jealous, you know. And I'm like, you know, instead of being jealous, you know, maybe you should ask me how I did what I did, you know, how I became the number one porn star in the world. You know, and you know, maybe I can guide you. For a while, I had thought about starting an agency and um, bringing back the types of girls that we had in the business back then. You know, but um, a lot of things happened, and I just decided not to do that anymore. But um, we we had some pretty hot chicks. Remember? Do you remember the girl from Egypt? Um, what was her name? Isis. Isis Nile. I love her. She was cool. She was sexy. She, she was a nice body. Yeah, she had yeah. a body, legs, skin. She was my roommate for a while. Really? She was down. She was cool. Uh -huh. I hit it one time, a couple times. And I know you hit it in the bathroom and upstairs and wherever. Yeah. yeah. But she was horny. I mean, she was a. She was great. She was nice. Yeah. So, so I, I think during our era, we had like a lot of. The, the looking guys and a lot of the really good looking girls and everybody was just cool with one another. We were like a family, you know? I thought so. Yeah. Well, who was your, what was your favorite scene you ever did? Mm, that's a tough one. Um, Casanova. That's the guy or that's the movie? The movie Casanova. Who was the guy? Rocco. Oh, yeah? It was my... No, no, it, it would have been... Um, there's a movie where I worked with Rocco in my car. I had a great quote of that. Because it was his first time ever working with a black girl. And I thought it was kind of cute. You know? Everybody thought he was hot, you know? You can't get mad at me about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. Rocco was a great performer. Good looking guy. I just remember I was laying on the floor and he had this, this um, Armani suit. 
And I said, um, I said, hi. And he said, I'm in so much pain. You just cut off four inches of my dick. And I said, well, how many inches is it now? He said, 12. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was Taylor Wayne's birthday present. They brought Western Visuals brought him in to work with her. And I just thought that he was just like, I was like, oh my God, it's beautiful. He didn't know English that long, you know? But we did a great scene on top of my car. And um, yeah, that was a good scene. I, I, I did a lot, I did some good scenes with you. I did um, great scenes with, with um, Peter North. They put me with him a lot. Really? Yeah. I, uh, he's, I he's someone, everybody asks me about Peter North. Huh? Really? Everybody. He's great. Because they put me with him all the time. You know? Mm -hmm. I, don't know I don't know why, but we were together. I worked with him more than I worked with anybody. He was on the show. Yeah? Yeah. How does he look? It was good. Yeah, he's in great shape still. He's 63. Wow. I, I talked to him about two years ago. He told me he was, I mean, his right when he told me he was getting married. Uh, about three years ago, probably. Yeah, three years ago, and he was 60. Yeah. He said 60 and still going strong. It's crazy, right? That, you know, so Rock was a great performer, so that was a great scene in Casanova. Uh -huh. And then, what other guys did you like working with? I liked working with Randy Spears. Yeah? Um, he, he's a nice person. He's a good actor, too. Very good. Um, I like working with Lexington. You, you know? worked with Lexington in a scene, really? Yeah. Really? We talk seven. No shit, so that's way, so like 99, 2000 or something like that? Yeah, he wanted to meet me. He, he was a stockbroker in New York. And when he came out here to do porn, he wanted to work with me. And um, we started dating, and I didn't know he was dating somebody else too. <laughs> <laughs> really? Vanessa Blue, she lived in Vegas. So okay. he had his girlfriend there, and then me here, you know? And I was like, that's not right. <laughs> well, that's a trip. Yeah. Yeah, so I did him, you know, and um, but, but not too many more people from the industry. After him, it was like over. Did you like him? You read him? Yeah, I was. And then, you know what? I ended up running into him and his wife, Savannah. Um, his well, wife? He got married. Are you sure? Yes. I don't know. I he married a girl, Savannah Styles, and I ran into them, them one Halloween um, at a, a costume shop. And she, she's from, she's like, oh, you're Dominique, and, you know, we're doing this line, and I was wondering if you would come over and, you know, hang out, you know, and I went over, and um, she did an interview with me, it's, it's on YouTube, right. my interview with Savannah Styles, Dominique's mom, and um, we, we, we had a lot of fun together, me and her. Huh? Yeah. She's white, no biker? She's white with a big old booty. Really? Huh. Yeah. I don't know who she is, huh? I can't believe you don't know who she is. Yeah, I mean, I think I heard the name, but, uh, you know. Big old booty. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. She's too booty. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, Lex was here on Sunday. Are you serious? Yeah. Have you had Flash here? Who? Flash Brown? No. Yeah. I uh, But Lex is here because he's helped me do the podcast. Well, I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. and they, we did three. He helped me interview um, Tread. And then we did uh, a special two weeks ago on the um, riots and protests. Mm -hmm. And then... Sunday, he's a very smart guy. Oh, yeah. So yeah. intellectual. I mean, yes. he's very so, so well-spoken. You know what I told him one time? I said, I said, Les, I know that if we were in a restaurant and a pretty black girl came to the table and I went to the bathroom, I know you would get her number. I said, that's why I never fought with you, because I knew what you would do. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I, knew, I, I knew it, you know? I mean, it was just, I just knew it. So you can't fight with someone when you already know who they are, you know? And, and we, we ended up being really good friends, you know? Just mm having -hmm. three ways. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Partying too? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think the show I did, we were partying the night before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Paul Thomas said, you know what Paul Thomas said once? What? Oh, he said, why, ha why have sex without drugs? Well, I think the drugs...
drugs kind of take away from the sets, and sometimes it it, it heightens the sets. It depends on what you're doing. Right, but he says, why would I have sex without drugs? So did why have drugs without sex? So did Lemmy from Motorhead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I met him. Yeah, I met him from Jeremy. Yeah, you had sex. Yeah, it was cool. With, with drugs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what was the drug? Coke. Coke? Yeah. Yeah. Rock or powder? Yeah. <laughs> you <said> so <that>. bad. <laughs> you know what's really funny is that I went into his home and he it's right across the street from um the what was that um place, the rainbow the rainbow room? Uh -huh. And he had a big swatchika on his wall. And so I was young and I was like, what is that on your wall? And I, he said it's a swatchika and I said are you going to kill me? <laughs> and he said, no. And when it's turned the opposite way, it means diff something different. I don't know if that's true to this day, but, you know, we had a lot of fun that night, you know. <laughs> he was good? Yeah, he, he was cool. He was yeah. a gentleman, you know. You know what that swastika, you're talking about the, like, the SS sign? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I was in China, mainland China, Hong Kong. I'm pretty sure it was Hong Kong. And up on the mountain is a Buddha. I'm pretty sure, you know, and uh, he has this swastika on his head. Are you serious? So you know what it really means? It's really supposed to mean good life. Hmm. Maybe it's turned a little different for the swastika. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked almost exactly the same to me. And I said, what the? fuck is that on that guy's head or his body, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not talking a little Buddha. We're talking a Buddha 30 or 40 feet tall, right? And I said, oh my God. Buddha's, you know, Buddha's a cursed item, so. No, you know, whatever, maybe it was a, whatever, I'm pretty sure it was a Buddha, but, you know, it's good fortune, good life. And it's, guess what? Way before Hitler. Wow. Way before Nazis. So that is a mind fuck. So he's probably correct. Yeah, he, I, I think he was correct. He was very honest, very fine. Yeah. So, but, you know, so PT, you know, you know PT, obviously. Yeah. Paul Thomas, right? Yeah, Paul Thomas. His, it seemed like he liked LSD and. I never would have thought that about him. And cocaine. Because and when he worked, he was very, his work ethic was very. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he's very. Very intelligent person, you know. But what's your drug of choice for sex? Um, well, I don't do drugs anymore. Um, I just got to the point where I was just, you know, I had kids, and you know, I don't do drugs anymore. But it was some, um, it was cocaine. Okay. Yeah. Rocks. Rocks. Rock queen. Rock, Rock queen. Star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but you know, when you're young, you go through that stuff, and you know, you know, we. Making lots of money, going hanging around celebrities, partying, you know. But um, you know, once I once I became a mom, my way of thinking changed, you know. But um, yeah, that was my that was my job. I mean, you know, the truth is, a lot of people put a shame or a guilt trip on drugs. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're not hurting anybody, and you're having a nice time, right? You know, it's not the drug that's the, that's the sin, it's overindulgence. Right, but why should it be anybody's business if you're not hurting anybody? Well, why should anything be anybody's business if you're not hurting anyone? Look at how they look at us as porn actors and yeah. actresses, you know? No, but I, drugs are, you can be in a lot of trouble for drugs. You know, you know and, and even, even you know, in a lot of like other things, you know, um, adult actresses are looked down upon because they have a stick. We have. They have a stigma that's connected with us. Either we're molested or this, that, or the other. And you know, it's that's not true. There are a lot of girls that we worked with that were, um, like Nina Hartley. She's a nurse. You know, a lot of girls were working their way through school. You know, Nina's. I think Nina's got like a fairly good education. Four or six years of college. And you know, I'm a nurse too now. Are you? Yeah, LVN. All right. Yeah, uh, I went. I went from insurance agent, insurance broker to real estate to nurse. Really? But I mean, you got you drove up. Everybody, she drove up in a badass 
$300,000 McLaren today. <laughs> With the gold wings and everything. She wanted to raise me in my car, but I sold it the other day. But the car is bad as hell, beautiful. Blue of my favorite colors. And the car is sick. What the hell? How much that thing cost? It was like $300,000. Really? Yeah. Well, how do you get all that money? What are you doing? Um, I'm a good businesswoman. Yeah? Yeah. What, time, what kind of business? <laughs> <laughs> I am a good businesswoman, and um, I, I, I just really kept myself out there after I stopped doing, because I retired at 27, and so I started doing music videos and regular films, and, you know, I had a few celebrity boyfriends. boyfriends. That's right. You said you used to go with Robert De Niro. Yeah. Is that true? It's true. Is it that low? It's true. True. Yeah. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, I mean, he's a great actor. I'd like to know what kind of guy Robert Zero is. Well, when I met him, I was with Mimi Miyagi. We were at this club, and she had a boyfriend that was older. And so she would always drag me along. So um, I think it was our first night doing Quaaludes. And, huh. and um, this, the guy, owner of the club, he came up to me. He said, hey, there's this guy who wants you to come and meet. Wants the you to go sit with him. So I'm sitting with this guy, and he has these like, like four Italian guys around him, big, huge guys are talking business and stuff, and I'm not saying a word. And then I raise my hand and ask to go to the bathroom. And then, and then um, I go to the bathroom, and Heidi Fleiss comes up to me, and she says, she says, um, who are you? And I said, my name is Steve. She said, take my number. And so um, I didn't even, and then I come out the bathroom, and the owner says, Bobby really likes you. And I'm like, Bobby Wu. He said, you're sitting with Robert De Niro. And I said, really? You know? And so afterwards, he invited me to go to the monkey bar, because we know him and Jack and some good friends. Go to the where? The, the monkey bar. Monkey bar, I heard and, it, yeah. I, and I said, I'm really tired. I just want to go home and go to bed. What year is this? This was in 94 when he shot me. 94? Really? Uh -huh. Cool. And, um, and I lost his number, and he hired someone to find me. He actually had them bring me in for a fake audition for, because he knew I loved Red Shoe Diaries. And he had someone bring me in for a fake audition. And they said, um, you're not here for an audition. He said, Bobby yes, asked me to track you out. And there's a little outside. And, and you're going to the Beverly Beach. And that's where they filmed Pretty Woman. And um, I, I went and met him in the bar there. And so many paparazzi were around the window. He, he's a very private guy. I felt like I was with my... He's, he's just so serious, you know? So serious, it's almost intimidating, you know? And, um, but very nice, very nice, very nice. And um, I had a really good time with him. I think that I, since I didn't know a lot about his career and who he was, that made him even more interested because I didn't watch a lot of television. I had never seen any of his films. Really? No, never. You heard his name, of course. I've heard his name probably, but um, when he was shooting Heat, when he um, when I met him, so um, and Al Pacino and Val yeah, Kilmer, yes. right? and then that was an epic scene. He told me when they were sitting at the table, and he said they had never been on film before at the same time because they were kind of like the nemesis. Yeah, of, they were the of, nemesis, and then to think that he died at the end, you know, I was like, how did they talk him into that? You know? Oh, so what did he say that was really kind of he, he intimidating? Said, he, yeah, he said he said it was just you know you, you understand like you and Peter North, you know? Yeah, we were cool, but I know yeah, something. Yeah. Me and Rocco. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. You and Rocco. So um, you know, like they shot a lot of scenes at night. You know, he, yeah, yeah. he would come and talk to me about some of the scenes, and um, you know, he's he's just a, he's just a great actor. He's a good person. And I remember one time he came to my house and he was like, this is crap you're watching. And I was like, baby, it's a buddy hat. And he was like, why don't you watch CNN or something, you know? Yeah. And I was like, okay. Really? <laughs> it was very intimidating, but um, I think that I made him feel like more youthful because I was just so, I was a kid, you know? I didn't know a lot about the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And then until and he told me, he said, you know, why don't you take your hair extensions out? And, and you know, wear your own hair. And I was like, that's like asking to meet my parents. You know? I remember when I said I remember when um, Naomi Campbell did that and they talked about that for months. 
Yeah. He, he was hitting. Yeah, yeah. He was hitting, yeah, right? Yeah. Did they ever talk about her? No, he didn't. He didn't. But, you know, everybody knew that he liked the sisters, you uh -huh. know? And um, it, it, it went on for about a year, yeah. you know? Could but, you put it down? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. He yeah. was good? He was great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he was great. That's good to hear. Yeah. So even even with um with him, I I never did watch a lot of his movies. Um, I saw he, you know. So so let me. I don't want to lose that scene because that seems like, you know, crazy. So yeah, he's, he's with Al Pacino and, and Tom Sizemore and Tom Sizemore, yeah. who you're going out with. Do you go out with Tom right now? No. No. no? I don't go out. We, um, we went out. Three years ago, oh, okay. but we're still really good friends. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. And you, I mean, you said something. I don't want to go off subject, but you said Tom Sizemore came to my office, and you said that he was intimidated or something, or what did you well, say? Well, he was a he because you know he liked he, he was in love with me, and he knew that you were my first love. Right. So it wasn't like a very uncomfortable situation. You're sitting behind your desk, and then Tom was sitting right here, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at you, and I'm going. Oh my God, you know, this has been 20 years, uh -huh. yeah. you know? It was just very, it was a very uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. Then you took him through your, um, then you took him through your studio and you got him all those Black Street Booker movies and... Well, all, all, yeah, the, shoot, all the show, I had a lot yeah, of different you, titles. You, 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 you did uh, a lot of movies, uh, Barbershop and... Yeah. Yeah, and he stacked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was, he was I got very, tired of looking at those movies. He's very, oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. He's a very nice guy. Yeah, yeah. So he said, the, but the scene, really the only kind of, like, heat, you know, would be between him and Al Pacino, really. Yeah. Right? Because that's like the friction of yeah. two superstars. Two superstars that are c competing on who's going to be the best actor, right? But, but yet, he went down at the end. Yeah, because Al Pacino wouldn't do it, huh? He wasn't going down. <laughs> but Al Pacino is so great. I mean. But you know, it was a great scene. That scene at the end uh -huh. made you cry because you could tell that Al Pacino had the love and admiration for this man, you know, because he was a man that was very smart, very, he thought the way he did, uh -huh. you know? And mm -hmm. they had a lot in common, too, uh -huh. you know? They did. Uh -huh. If you really watched the movie, they uh -huh. had a lot in common. You know, they they with the relationships and you know so so you remember when they were in the middle of that field and he was like those motherfuckers are watching us like uh, <laughs> near the airport or something yeah yeah near the airport uh, you know so they were both very smart they were both um they, they didn't stay in relationships for long because they what they work what they did for work you know um but you know I I, I love that movie that's one of my favorite movies because. I was with him when he was doing it, so. Oh, that must be really exciting. Yeah, it was really exciting, yeah. You wanna hear another, some kind of similar, same parallel? Yeah, yeah. Not parallel, but parallel in the, of two actors coming together. Maybe you saw, you probably didn't see the movie, but Clint Eastwood and Burt Reynolds. They oh, never, they yeah. were, you know, superstars and they're, you know, in the 60s, what movie 70s. What was that? I had to look it up, right? But they met, right? And so, Burt Reynolds pulls out a gun, but Clint Eastwood pulls out a bigger gun. <laughs> you know, because he's the king anyway, yeah. Clint Eastwood, right? Hey, it's just, they had never met either, you know what I mean? But, but you know, with he, it was just like a really epic scene, yeah. because, you know, these were both like really serious, like, great like, actors, you know? I believe From it. Godfather and, you know, but they'd never been on the screen at the same time before. Yeah, that's crazy. How could they not be on the same screen? For so the, the shots were, they didn't need to be in the screen when the Godfather was being shot because, you know, because he was the younger yes. version of, you know, um, Marlon, Brando. Marlon Brando, right? Mm -hmm. So then they didn't, it makes sense, they didn't have to be in the shot because part two is when they kind of came around, mm -hmm. right? Or, I can't remember totally, but right, makes sense. But they were in the same movie, kind of, but not but really not the same. same. Yeah, same scenes. Same scenes, right. yes. Anyways, yeah, so that was great. Must have been real exciting, you know. Yes. Yes, that was exactly. great. So, um, any other celebrities? I know you said you mess around with a few others. Even because we met probably in your gym's office around '95. You try to get me in your Corvette, and you're trying to attack me, yeah. right? Remember? Yeah, uh, in the back, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm the, I'm you almost went for it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
You know, because we're working together every day, so you know, eventually you're gonna hook up. You know, it's just, and I just, I just started, I started seeing a therapist, and they told me they say when you go to work, you put on your suit, you zip it up, and then when you leave, you take that suit off and you, you just put it away, because you know there's Deirdre and there's Dominique. You know, you know each one of us has you know a little bit of one characteristic or another. But, you know, we are two different people, you know. And um, so I, that's the part that, problem that I had in the industry because it was hard for me to differentiate Deirdre from Dominique, you know. I mean, we were the same person, but we were different, you know what I mean? And plus I'm a Gemini, so, you know. But um, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun when I was doing movies and... Um, I, I, I don't regret it. You know, I've had people ask me, you know, if you could turn back time, would you have? And I said, no, because that was my family, you know. I came out here alone with no family, and that was my family, you know. So, you know, I don't regret anything I've done, you know, because it's all been a learning experience for me. But um, I get a lot of questions about you, <laughs> of course. What's it like dating TC, you know? And I said it was, it was great, you know, he was a gentleman, we had fun, and it just didn't work, you know? We had too many jealous girls wanting to break us up because they wanted to fuck you, you know? And they did. They did. The girls want to have... They did fuck you and they did break us up. <laughs> <laughs> the girls liked me? Yeah, they liked you. Uh -huh. They liked you right in that bathroom, right before seeing and after. Uh <laughs> You didn't think I knew about that, though. Well, but I didn't. I mean, yeah, probably a lot of girls were pretty friendly to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're young, you're, you know. It's something about youth, right? Youth is something. It, it was, it was, it was, um, you know, youth and you were powerful, you know? And then to, for you to have left the industry and build an empire the way you did, you know, I wasn't shocked because you were always, like, with your money, you were always, you weren't like, you weren't like wasting your money. Like if you got a thousand dollars, you put 800 in the bank, you know? And um, when I found out that you had your own company, I said, you know what, that, I'm not shocked, you know? Cause you had a very good business mind. Even before you got into the business, you told me you were kind of like a business person, you know? So, um, you know, you just, you, you just really did show, this shocked me with, I, I didn't realize how big your company was, you know, until I took Tom over there, you know, and we're walking around, and it's all these roles and movies, and you know, I'm like, oh my God, you know? But um, you did really well for me, so I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we were there together at the very beginning, uh -huh. so we know each other. So a lot of times you meet somebody when they're already past a certain point in their life, so you wouldn't know what the beginning was more like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we know. Mm -hmm. So we know that we work for people to, you know, that paid me 125 bucks a scene. But yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the end I was getting paid seven hundred dollars a scene yeah. as an actor working for people mm -hmm. in the nineties, right? Which was yeah. pretty top pay. But we know that we were there in the beginning. I was just a guy happy to work, loved to work, and I was part and in the end my company is as big or bigger than probably 90% of the companies that we always worked for. Really? I mean, I had, you know, a lot of time. There were some that had more, more time, but I had six, I made 1,600 movies. Wow. You know that's a pretty big company. Yes, it's big. You know, and I actually produced for 20 years. Wow. So I just Aren't you going to film, like, a, a film of your life or something? Are you working on something like that? I wrote something. I wrote, I wrote a book, and I'm going to make it. You wrote a book? Yeah, I wrote a book. It's about the business. So a lot of people just want to sit here the book about you. It's me in it, but I'm not an egomaniac like that. I want the beauty of the business. Like Bruce Lee says, 
go slow so you can see, don't miss the heavenly glory, you know, of the beautiful things. So in my heart, mm -hmm. the porno is so beautiful for me. Mm -hmm. It's, I love porno for, not because the people fucking, because of the love that you get out of it and you know, the love that was part, that, you yeah. know, part of history, part of learning, part of making money, part of, part of so many things. So yeah. I made a book that has so many characters it. in it. Yeah. I'm gonna make an audio book out of it, so I'll bring you on so you can do a couple yeah. voices if you want. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about doing a book myself, you know? 700 pages. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm writing a science fiction book right now, but almost done with that, a crazy ass book, I'll read that one too. But anyway, so I love porno and yeah, I mean, my company was pretty, um, pretty yeah, big. Yeah, it's pretty up there, right? Pretty up there, pretty up there. And, you know, how, how did you feel when I walked in there with Tom? I mean, well, you know, was it it's like we had, you know, sometimes, you, you know, when you're younger, you say, you know, shit happens, right? You know, we had, you know, heartaches and all that, and I've been pissed off at you for a long time. But, you know, I said, I can't, you know, stay pissed off at you, you know, that's, you know? Not, we both were wrong, you know what I mean? I mean, you were cheating too. Yeah, <laughs> we both cheated. Yeah, I'm not innocent, no fucking way. I never claim to be innocent. Yes, you, I, you no, no, I can never be, I'm never innocent, you know, when it comes to I just never caught you, you know? Cheating, you know, <laughs> yeah, but I caught you, so that's probably, <laughs> But you know, at the end, so it was nice to see you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's really nice to see you alone here. You know, I mean, because I'm older, I'm more mature. Mm -hmm. I can see things in a different perspective. Yeah. You know, and you tell me more about your your view, point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, because I didn't even know that you were out here by yourself. If you told me, I didn't pick it up. You know, mm -hmm. at 60 years old. So, you know, when you're young, things are moving fast. You're moving fast. Things are moving fast. Things are different. You know, things yeah. go fast. But um, yeah. So you see, we both came up. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, let's face it. I was probably the most successful porn star in the world. Porn star is in the means of starting his own company and doing so much. As a great performer and a and great, great businessman. Yes. So on that aspect, there's um, you know, Rocco's. A higher level as a porn star, without a doubt, because you know, mm -hmm. I quit performing. Mm -hmm. You know, I moved into business, and there's some other guys that came around that are, you know, great. My boy Nacho, he's great. Manuel's a great performer. You know, these are guys that you know went high, but I wouldn't give much more to anybody else in my in my atmosphere. Yes, they can say that, they can think that, but, uh, but I don't think so. Peter North's great too. I don't want to say anything about Peter North. But I'm a little stronger than a performer. <laughs> and he, he'll tell you. <laughs> we work together 300 times, I side know, by side. I know, I know. So, I mean, he'll tell you right any day. You know, I mean, he's great. He's Peter North. He's an icon. Yeah. That would, you know, only so great. You have a lot more stamina. I have stamina. And I, when I got older, I mean, you know, as we broke, I became better and better as a performer, you know, and able to do. Um, more passion, be more passionate, yeah. and, and do different styles, and I really became way strong as before. Lover you lover boy? Huh? You became a lover boy? That was no, I became more aggressive and more wild in the scenes, and so that, oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I think that's what made kind of separated me from any American performer because they can never keep up with my stamina. That's just the way it was, especially after we. Truth is, after I broke up with Amy, that's when I hit another level. So in 94, I got real um, real serious about porno. Anyways, but we were there. I feel fortunate to be part of porno. You know, and it was, it was beautiful. You say you wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't take it back. It's nothing but beauty, mm -hmm. you know, I think. How many movies did you do? 400. That's a lot of movies. A lot of movies. I did a lot of them for leisure time because you know how they get shit out of there. Yeah, Mark. They'll shoot all over that, that office, you know, yeah. and do 10 box covers in one day, you know. So that's why I still am um, relevant because I have movies that are being released now that we shot back then. Really? Yeah, because he shot 100 box covers with me, you know. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, 100 box covers. Really? Yeah, it's like, you know, I was on the contract with them.
Yeah. You know, so did he pay for your kids? Because they no, had I already work. had my set. I know you had your own set, first set. Then you did another. Yeah, he did do another one. He did the thousand CCs. Yeah. Oh, so he helped you out for that one. Yeah, but it was only supposed to be like five hundred. He had a pump of money that I was under. You really? Oh, I went back to him and I cried. I said, "Take these things out. They're painful." But he was always really kind to me. And I remember um, when I went into his office, he said he had pictures of Jenna Jackson on his desk. And he said, this is what I want you to be. You know, he said, this is the kind of girl that I want to represent my company. And I, you know, I, was, I had been smoking. Look who it is. It was Al. Al. Peter. Al. I got, guess who I got here in the interview next to me? You'll never guess this one. Uh, Dominique Simone. <laughs> She was talking about how you were, she said that you were her first scene. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah he was. He okay. Was. Peter, the great Peter Northern. Was that from Roy, Roy Alexander? That's what I was thinking. It was oh, like, right. it, was, it was some guy, it was at um, Vogel Studios. Because I remember he, I, I, I do remember him and, stopping uh, and saying, I don't think this girl is like a page or something. <laughs> <laughs> you stopped the scene, Al? You said that the girl looks underage? Something happened. Uh, That's what she says. Something happened, yeah. I can't, can't totally recall, but yeah, it was, it was a, a, a moment <laughs> that happened. Yeah. We got the great Peter North on the phone, in case anybody don't know. And uh, Dominique's first scene was with Peter North. Thanks for answering the phone. <laughs> Going back. So that must have been the studio over there off of Canoga, not the new one, but the old, smaller studio, yeah. right? It was the old, small, the smaller one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron Vogel. Yeah. yeah. Back yeah. in the day, it must have been about 1990 or something. 91. Yeah, it sure 90? was. So 1990. 99. Anyway, bro, I just wanted you to say hi to her, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up. And uh, yeah. you know, this is great, Peter North. Say what's up to everybody. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Thanks, man. You guys have a good podcast. All right, thanks. All right. I'll call you back. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. 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 Bye. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can't believe you guys are still friends after all this time. You guys are really good friends. Yeah, he's very really nice. Yeah. I actually was a fan of this, you know? Like you were? Yeah. Because I was watching the porn I I go, that guy seems like me. He seems like a cool guy. He's like a nice guy, right? You know, he's like, like, you know who I didn't like? I didn't like Mark Wallace. <laughs> right? But, you know, I, we became friends. Yeah. I beat his ass one time on an airplane. <laughs> Up in the sky, actually, before the 9-11 happened, so I didn't get in trouble. Where were you going to? Um, Roy's? Coming, no, coming back from Frisco. From Frisco, yeah. We used to shoot up there a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So you did all, so did you have sex with uh, Mark? Mark Wallace? Car carrier. You know. I went out on dates with him. Leisure time. Yeah, I went on dates with him. Yeah, that's excellent. Is that it? No, no. He, he, he actually hooked me up with John Wayne Bobbitt. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because John Wayne Bobbitt saw one of my pictures, and we, we had this big party in Hollywood, and um, John Wayne Bobbitt went to be with me. So they took everybody home, and then took me home last and pushed him out the car with me, and we were drunk. And then I woke up, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Yeah. I said, can I see it? And I was like, wow, they really reattached that really well. That's scary as hell, huh? Yeah. For a lot of people might not remember, but Lorena Bobbitt cut off John Wayne Bobbitt's dick and took it down the street and threw it out in the... It had the ant with the ants on it. Really? <laughs> ants were eating it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Anyways, that's fucking crazy. So you did 400 movies. Mm -hmm. And you started in what year? I started in 1989. You did? 90, 90 was when you just said 90 was when we were at So you started in 89? Mm hmm. Really? Mm hmm. Because I started in 89. Yeah, we started about the same time. Well, that's fucking crazy, but we didn't, you didn't do much work. No, no. I went to see, um, I told you I went to, on the ad for figure modeling. It took me a while to go back because, you know, I just, I just couldn't see myself doing that, you know. 
I, I knew my grandmother would not approve of that, but I needed money because those times were hard, you know? And so um, I started off doing um, photo shoots, you know, like for Fred Savage for players and, you Fred know. Savage. Yeah, he always helping you out. Yeah. That's the guy who. You didn't like him at all. Because you were, he was in it, wasn't he? No, because he was Come in on. He's in Puerto Rico, Curacao. Oh, like, come on, he's taking my girl to the islands, and he's not in it. Come no, on. he was just very, he had that, you remember he had that really pretty black? Salaf, not savage, Salaf. Salaf. And he had, he had a, a wife that was in the porn business that was very popular. Yeah. Afrique or something like that, Afrique. But she's very pretty. Um, Sahara, you remember Sahara, Sahara Hands? Sahara, Sahara Sands. You know she Sahara? Is. Sahara Sands and Nina DeBanca. Sahara, the beautiful... Black, Black girl. girl. Brown skin. Yeah, she was very beautiful. She, where was she? She was hanging out with him? No, she, she was around that time. He shot pictures of all of those girls. Well, Sahara was out when I came in. Yeah, but he was shooting before uh -huh. he came in. Right. He shot all of those girls. So Sahara was still around then? Well, she was shooting pictures for him. She was beautiful. Did you meet her? Um, I didn't meet her, but I met Nina Walker. No, I met Nina. She's pretty, she's great too. Pretty. Yeah, but pretty I mean, beautiful. Sahara had a really interesting... Nina's really pretty too, but I thought Sarah was like more. So Harry did a great scene with Beautiful. Mal, um, where um, he was a college student, uh -huh. and his, um, you know, she was like in the eighties, she was cleaning, and um, he was eating his peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and had this like this like sportsman's jacket, and she bent over and he fucked her on the table. I was like, oh, that's fucking hot. Uh, you know? horny. Yeah. Love the horny. Did you watch porn before you got in the business? Yeah. I had seen some magazines. I had seen um, Vanessa Del Rio. Yeah. On the cover of some magazines, but no, I didn't watch porn. Okay. No. Did you? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Where did you find porn movies? Yeah, drugs. Oh, it was way, it was very difficult back then. <laughs> very very difficult. But my father also had magazines. Oh. Movies were really hard. But magazines, I used to steal all his magazines. But movies, I would get my stepsister to rent them. Right. Um, remember when the movies used to, the CDs used to be like two hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, they were uh, VHS, betas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's. Get, I want to get back to this because this is important. You know, black female porn stars. You know, historic history of them. Mm -hmm. You know, we know Sahara before us. Yes. Right. Sahara, Nina DePonka, Ebony Eyes. Ebony Eyes. I, I was supposed to work with Ebony Eyes in my first scene, but she decided she's quit. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Right before I was she, she, didn't, she didn't know it was me, but I mean, because I was nobody. She told me. I, sh I did a shoot with her for yeah. um, a magazine. And she's supposed to work, and unfortunately, she did, that would have been great, you know what I mean? Because I would have had a lot of fun. Oh, I knew you would have. Right? And I worked with this other girl who I wasn't really into. She was a nice person, but you know. She, not my style, but Ebony Eyes would have been a lot better. So Ebony Eyes, Angel Kelly, Sahara, Ma Bay. Oh, Ma Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a girl, a Desiree, a black girl, Desiree. I remember her. Way back. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Desiree that's, West? It was a Desiree West or something? Yeah, that's when porn was very taboo. Yeah. You know, when it's underground. Mm -hmm. But it was shot on film, though. Yeah, it was great. I mean, yeah. it, was it seemed more real, you know? Yeah. It was great. Did you... Which one of those girls do you think was the best? Can you pick one? I like Danger Kelly and right. Sahara. I'm, I'm with you. I'm exactly with you. Yeah. Angel Kelly and Sahara. Mm -hmm. Nina Parker was great, beautiful. But she was, Angel, she, she kept herself up. She kept some, her body together. And, something you know, about her, some heat. And she, she, right? she, she's just very, like, ugh. Like, right? she, she loves that. Yeah, she was, uh, she was hot. Yeah. Horny. Like you, you love, you love, I mean, come on, I could hear you, you moaning like fucking <laughs> four football fields away. <laughs> like, oh my God, listen to this at the avocado ranch with his dick small. What's he do with the big dick, right? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so 400 movies and, do you like girls? Yeah. I, like girls. I know you like girls. I know you know. Cause she used to have girls. She always had girlfriends on the side. Uh -huh. Look at her pussy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Come on. Yeah, we were just going out, hanging out, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, me and Taylor Wayne. Me and no, no, but other girls. 
He had some other girls. I remember, he, come on. He, he had other girlfriends. Yeah, I know he had some girlfriends. It's not a big deal, but you know. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so you like licking girls or just hanging out with them more? Or? Um, you know, well, I, I do consider myself bisexual, so so I guess everything that goes along with being a girl. Uh-huh, <laughs> being with a girl, you know? Everything. You know? Shop ones, toys. Yeah. I, I, I think women are beautiful, you know? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I have to agree. That's another thing you have to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, come on. I don't like guys that, you know, like a beautiful, the body shape, you know. I love when they're soft and sweet, you know. I don't yeah. like when yeah. they want to be men. I love yeah, when they're, they're very, sweet. They're very gentle and, you know. Yeah. I, I like to be on girls. Yeah. Well, I can't blame you. <laughs> but you know, back then you were like, and you were young, so you like, when was the first time you messed around with a girl? Well, probably when I was in high school. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no names. <laughs> white girl, black girl? Um, she's a white girl. Oh, yeah? You seduced her? I no, no, no. You know, during that time they called it hunching, you know? Where you just like grinding them against each other as you call it. Oh, uh, nothing more? No. We, we didn't even know about that. <laughs> oh, right. In West Virginia, you know? Wasn't going down on each other, you know? Maybe touch each other's pussies or something, but you know? We, we weren't like really going down on each other, so it was. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to ask me all these questions. <laughs> you got me good this time. You got me good this time. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it's really, uh, what do you want to say? Like, really, everybody agrees on. Girls like girls today. It's yeah. Very common. Yeah, it's, it's very common. It's not taboo anymore at all. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. So, so you like girls. I know you like girls. And um, you like guys. What is, what is your type of guy? What is your, the model, you know, almost like a car, right? What, what no. type of guy you like? Tall, dark, handsome, or, you know, average height, strong, personality, black, white, anybody? Well, Spanish. <laughs> I, I I met someone um, recently, and um, he was younger, um, a pro soccer player, and we really clicked, you know. And um, yeah, I, I think I like I like younger I like younger guys. They're very they're very um, it's very nice to me, you know. And you can train them. You can train them how to fuck you, you know? You know, they're, they're willing to take direction. Alright. Yeah. And, and he took direction. <laughs> and he put it down. Alright. But I mean, before him. But, but I, like, I, like to, he, I like to, like, you know, I'm like, he's Hungarian and, and um, Persian. But um, I like to, um, guys, you know, dark hair, you know, European looking. You know, not too many blondes. I had one blonde boyfriend. What is long? No, I don't know what he's long. You <laughs> too. No, um, but you know, I, I like the more exotic looking, like you know, um, Brazilian, Spanish, Portuguese. You know, that was my type. I mean, I'm Spanish, but you can't really tell, can you? I. You know, you told me you're Puerto Rican, and I, I could tell because I met your family, you know? So, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Did you like my look in those days? Oh, you looked great. You dressed great. Um, oh, you definitely kept your hair in. <laughs> <laughs> you spent half an hour in the bathroom doing your hair before you see you dressed. Oh, really? Yeah. It, it oh. made sure it was perfect, you know? Not, I, don't, I don't think you want anyone touching your hair either. You know, but you know, you really kept yourself together, and you, you um, you did nice things for yourself. You know, but you overindulge. You know, you weren't very, you were very modest. You know, so um, that's one of the things that I really liked about you. And we went on great vacations. We had fun, and it was just, it was just, it was just fun. You know, you were my first boyfriend. <laughs> I was really your first first boyfriend. Yeah, you were my first. First serious boyfriend. Yeah, first serious boyfriend. 
And that's why it was so devastating, you know? Because your first love is the one that um, that kind of hurts you the most when you break up, you know? And um, sometimes you may take that into your later adulthood. You know, sometimes you may have to go and deal with deal with it, you know, with by talking to someone, you know? I went through a really hard time when you broke up because you were a major part of my life and I didn't go out, you know, I didn't do too many things. It was just me waiting for you to come home, you know? So it was, it was, it was a very difficult, difficult time for me. But um, I got through it, I got through it. But it took a long time. I mean, you, it sounds to me like you really chose up. Robert De Niro, right? <laughs> that was great. <laughs> sounds, better, sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it, it, it was hard, you know. Um, but I, I got through it, you know. And um, it took it took about a good amount of time because you know we had to see each other on sets and stuff, you know. And we even had to work together still after we broke. No, no, we never. We did a dialogue scene together really? for NYP. We worked together. Then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I understand. I've never seen you tongue tied. I'm not tongue tied. I'm just thinking back about seeing 400 movies, you know, and, you know, in the times, and your favorite actors. You, I remember, here's a Do story. Do you still have a picture of us in um, Cancun when we were at dinner and the orange dress? No, I don't have that one. Oh, okay. I only have one on the beach, you know, and the one I just showed you, that's pretty much it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I remember how, yeah, but I won't bring this one up. I'm going to forget that story. But I know that you like John Doe a lot as a, as a working with John Doe, right? I did. I did. I thought it was going to be. Remember that one day he came home and his cum stuck on your neck? Oh, no, that was a cum. It was soap. <laughs> <laughs> it was soap. It was dial, by the way. <laughs> yeah, come on. I think that one because uh, you had his cum left on your your neck. No, I think, I think you watched the scene. No, no, I didn't watch it. You never watched any of my scenes? No, no, really, I don't think so. I watched a lot of yours. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think the scene we did was I think did we only work together once or work together twice? twice? That'd be before after we got together. Tw um, twice before and maybe two or three times after. Yeah. So yeah, we did some work together. So, uh, any other actors that you like that you want to mention? Or girls? How about the girls? Any other girls that you thought were great? Janet, of course, we know is great. But any other girls you want to mention that you thought were hot and great you like working with? I like um, Heather Hunter. Heather Hunter's cool. Yeah. Um, hmm. Taylor Wayne, we worked together a lot. Um, Mimi Miyagi. I thought Mimi Miyagi was really sexy and really good. And she still is. Yeah. Yeah, she does look. She, she looks good. She looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell, I, tell her to say hello. I will. I will. Yeah. I mean, she, she's she's my first girlfriend. She's close to my age. Yeah. Same age. I thought she was like. No, she's she's not. She's younger. She's like close to my age. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but she's she's in Vegas and doing well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her to say hello. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what companies, what are your favorite companies to work for? I'd say Le Chetain. Le Chetain? Yeah, because they paid us well, and um, their quality, the quality of their box covers. And Great they, boxes. They made us, like, you know, playmates, like, you know. But they had a Playboy photographer, didn't they? Yes, yeah, Sam. And Sam. another, I thought the, the other guy was a, was it a Robert or something? Yeah. I thought he was a Playboy. I, I liked working for Coast to Coast, too. They're nice people. Yeah, yeah, they did some really good covers. Pretty nice until I started doing business with him. <laughs> you know who the owner of Coast to Coast was? David? Is it David? No. Who was it? No, Coast to Coast, David is actually a, um, a foreign rights mm -hmm. you know, distributor, seller, or, you know, person that sells foreign rights. But Coast to Coast, the company, mm -hmm. is Marty. I can't remember his last name, but I know who you're talking about. Weinstein or... Yeah, yeah. 
you know, I can't remember the perfect, but you know, Marty, anyway, Marty, I did business with him a lot. And Marty and his brother were New connected. York. New York, right? Were gangsters, kind of gangsters, mm -hmm. but they're connected to the mom, to <laughs> Roberto Di Bernardo. They were all grew up together. And they all started, matter of fact, Teddy and, and DB started a, a book, a little um, magazine in the mid 70s, I think. Anyways, they became model with strippers. That's a little undercover information that I know. Yeah, yeah. but you, you know, you had to be let into the business. You, it's not like you came in and you just made money. No. Yeah. I mean, you're not, back in those days, you're not coming to the business. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. Yeah, know? it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. How great was it? How great was and working for Jim Song? Jim was great. Jim was our Jim was our counselor. You know, I mean, we would have fights, and I would call him, and he'd say, you know, you guys just need to chill and just like you know, and you like separate for a little bit. And he was he was like our our, our like our counselor. You know. He, I really liked him. He was like a father figure, you know? And all of his advice was good, you know? He really looked out for us and he really cared about our well-being. He didn't just care about making money. And, and I loved him, so, you know? You know, you can go in there and talk to him about anything. I would go in there crying and say, oh, and, you know, and, you know, he, he would make me feel better, you know? He would come back, he will come around. You know, and he was really nice. Right. Yeah, he's the best, right? Yes. And then his son came in, his son was good. You know, he he got me a lot of work and you know, he knew me like a book. He said she's crazy, but she sells. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you were you were you were fucking around. You come to work and you're serious. Yeah. Was, from what I remember. I was serious, I did my scripts, I, I was professional and yeah. you know, I that's what you're supposed to be anymore. Yeah, but you know, some people aren't, but you were, as far as I remember, you were pretty serious about work. Yeah, very serious. Yeah. I mean, you weren't fucking around. No. No. <laughs> no. You were showing up on time, coming to work with your the right clothes, you are spending a lot of money buying outfits, I remember. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like if you're gonna do something, you gotta be the best at what you do, you know? And I wanna, you know, I wanted to stay on top, you know? there's a, competition coming in, you know, and then that, there goes your money. So if another girl came in, then I took it one step up. She had black hair, I went blonde. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think I saw that box. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many uh, years did you work? I worked until I was 20, no, 32. 32. I did, I did my last scene with Lutz. So you worked, you came back here and there a couple of times? Yeah. Till 32, so you started when you were 18, till 32? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much 14 years? Yeah. And off I, and on? I went into the Hall of Fame in 1997. Oh yeah, that's cool. Really? Mm-hmm. 97? You beat me. I beat you? Yeah. You know, are you sure you made it 97? Well, we gotta look it up. I yeah. think it was 97, 98. Really? Well, if you did that, you beat me. That'd be crazy. Yeah, I did. Wow. I did, yeah, 97, 98. So you were the biggest black porno star, black female porno star before in your time? Yeah, um, it, was, it was between me and Heather Hunter. You and Heather Hunter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We were like rivals. Yeah. Like you and Rocco. No, but friendly but rivals. <laughs> yeah, friendly but rivals. Yeah, but when, once I got to know her, she was a very sweet girl. Oh, yeah, she was very cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. You know, people like creating that drama. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. yeah, you know, pushing, oh, pushing the girls against one another. But um, she was a very sweet girl, and um, she's a photographer now, and she's doing great. And I still talk to her today. Yeah. And I talk to very few people from the business now. But she's one of the people that we stay in touch with. Yeah. No, I, I reached out to her the other day. She's in New York. She said she'll come on the show, but she's in New York. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, she's always, we worked together probably five, six times, mm -hmm. seven times, something like that. Yeah, but I saw you flipping her around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, yeah, she's, she's very, she's pretty. She was great. Very yeah. petite, very pretty. She yeah. was great. Yeah, she was good. She's great. 
Oh, but at least we had the same, the same, um, we like the same types of women, you know? Oh, we don't want to forget, yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't want to forget this one thing. So, you used to go out with Jake for a little bit, or you just worked with him a couple times? You like had a crush on him. Jake Steed. Jake, we worked together, and he came home with me, and we were dating for a little bit. Yeah? We, this is before me. Before you, well, before I even met you or Jake. Yeah. So this is 1989. Yes. It has to be, right? Yes. Right. You knew that when we got together, right? I, I heard he told me that you punched him in the back of the head. I did. He deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he's a player. Was he? <laughs> Jake was a player back then? <laughs> Kid, you know. Oh, girl, yeah, he was a pretty boy. He had the dick that curved to the right, to the left, to the whatever. And he had this 12 pack. And remember, he did that video with the white on, and he was like bossing. And, you know, he was the bomb, you know? Uh huh. But, um, I, you know, he's just, he's just that, he was a womanizer. He know? was back then? Yeah. You seemed very shy. Please. Really? <laughs> yeah, in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he wasn't shy at all. He wasn't shy at all. And um, yeah, so so he's cool. And you guys are best friends too. I haven't yeah. talked to him for 20 years or right. 18 years. Well, he left town. You know what I mean? And I've talked to him since. So. That's amazing. You guys are really good friends. Yeah, we brought him with you. You we went with you when you broke up with me. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty. Yeah, we were real tight. That's sad, you know. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things have happened in the business that have been very shocking. A lot of, we've had some, a few loss, and um, just the business has changed a lot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What, how do you see the future right now? What do you see in the future, and how do you see it right now? Both. So, how do you see it right now, and how do you see the future in the of the porn business? Okay. Um. Right now, I see there's a lot of trafficking going on. There's a lot of there's a lot of the dark, darkness of the sex industry coming out, you know, um, and I think in the future it's going to be even worse, you know. Um, you know, we didn't know about the dark web when we were doing films. We had no clue of that. There was no, there was no web when we were yeah. in the movie, no such thing. Yeah, so, um, you know, you know, with, with, with the dark web, and I think that's why people think the way they think about us, because they see all and hear all these horrible things from there, and then they compare us to those people when they didn't realize that all we did was we came to work, read our scripts, did our scenes, went home. We didn't party on the sets. We didn't do drugs. It was, we didn't do all the crazy things people thought we did. I never, ever, I swear to you, ever saw any drugs on the set. I never saw you either. I mean, you know, because it was it was it wasn't allowed. You knew you would be out of the business for good, and and um. But know. they were drugs ten years before or five years before we got in the business. It was. Yeah. But when I was running, yeah, I was the John Holmes and yeah. You know, Paul Thomas they used to do cocaine on the scene, but I never saw it when I was running. I never saw it either. I never saw it either, and um, and you know, it was it was just a lot different, and like I said, I I had thought about um creating an agency and, and um, you know, bringing back, you know, some girls, you know, just girls that had, like, class and, you know, bringing those girls from the 90s back that we had, you know. It was a, it was a fucking family, right? It was nice, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Some love and respect. And then we, then we had a good, we had a good, like, little, we had, you know, some pretty um, Asian girls, Kobe Thai. You know, we had yes, pretty yes. Hispanic girls. It was just a good mixture of mm-hmm. girls, you know? And they were very sexy and, you know? I want to bring that element of class back, you know? Because I can't even watch a movie on Pornhub now. It's just like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I have to say, sometimes I see all these girls with all these tattoos. And I say, way back when I was growing up, the only person who had tattoos were bikers. <laughs> You know, and especially a whole bunch of them, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I see a girl with all these tattoos. Like tattoos you know. I don't know, like tattoos. You know that, right? Yeah. I never like the girls having tattoos. Yeah, you do like that. I like girls just to be the beautiful beauties that they are. You know, I love all the beauty about them, you know, not tattoos. tattoos. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, but so you see, the, what do you see the future? Just being ugly? Or I, just, I just, it's just getting darker and darker, you know? Yeah. Um, the things that they do now in films, we didn't do. There's no way. <laughs> it's out there, right? You know? Yeah, and like, you know, like I see like cocky, I'm like, what is that? You know, I don't even know what that is, you know? So it just, just it seems like it got, I don't know, twisted. And I don't know how that happened. Well, I'll tell you how it happens. Is that it's driven by the fans. Because the they people, want to see more. They want to see more. The people that make the movies want the people to appreciate it and buy it so they can sell and make money. So you give them this, they go, oh, we're bored, we already sold that. Oh, we'll have to figure out something. So you have to keep pushing up the ante. Do more and more and more. So where is the top? Where is the limit? And that's, the, that's what's going on. So maybe the limit is what we don't want to be part of or see. Arthur, we don't want to see. I don't care about it. I like normal. But what is the limit? There's no limit. There's, no, it has, the, where's the ceiling? The ceiling is here. It seems like the ceiling is here. Anything else isn't even going to be sex, I don't believe. Yeah. But I'm not watching porn all the time, so I could be off a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this is how I see. But they still make normal scenes. They still make normal. So that's, you know. Yeah. So, hey, you know. You know, and live and let is my motto, but who knows? Maybe um, snuff films is back to snuffing films. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe that's gonna excite yeah, somebody. Yeah, you know, you know, like, snuff films are the number one selling movies in the world because people like to see other people suffer. You know that? I bet. I believe it. Because it's like something that's like an urban legend. People don't believe it, so they want to see it. Because they don't believe that things like that happen. It happens every day. Yeah, but you probably you hit the one point there before that. You're saying that people like to see people suffer, and that can't just be original. It's the nature of the beast, maybe. Yeah, the, the violent part of this. The sense. human humanity is. Yeah. Is you know likes to beat you up. I guess I don't know. But yeah, you see a lot of it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But we want to be you know happy. <laughs> How many children do you have? I have, um, I have four. That's good. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. And Thank you. That's, a, that's a whole nother world. Yeah. Taking care of your kids. It is a whole nother world. And they drive me nuts. So, I mean, they give you the love, right? They give me the love. Um, and it's probably one of the most re rewarding things I've ever been through in my life, you know, having children. And um, I love my kids a lot. Yeah. And I know that everybody knows, you know, but I know even more that you need love. Yeah. And, but everybody needs it. But some people need a little more because they didn't get enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm glad and happy that you have for children to give you love. That's, I want, that's what I wanted. I wanted to have someone that loved me unconditionally and that wasn't going to hurt me, you know. And um, I got that. I got that. But you know, as kids get, get older, they, they change, you know. You hear those stories. <laughs> <laughs> they have their own lives, right? Yeah, they change. They change. But then they come back around. Uh -huh. So it, it's, it's been... It's been a lot of ups and downs, but you know, I love my kids still. So, I guess this is, we're almost at the end, but we don't want to leave out, you know? And God bless your kids, and I hope that they all live a long, healthy life, everything's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I hope, you know, you stay healthy and happy mm -hmm. with them. What, you know, we don't want to miss these, this just came to me. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite physician? People might want to know. Um, missionary. Missionary? You can go deeper. In missionary? Mm -hmm. And you like? And plus the embracing, the kissing, the looking at each other. You know, I'm more of a sensual, you know, I, 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 you know, with women, women, it's mental, you know? So I want to see you. I want to see how you feel. I want to feel you. I want to touch you. I want to kiss you, you know? And if you have me turned over on my stomach, <laughs> I'm not going to see you unless I can turn my head around like Linda Blair or something, you know? 
So, so I'm, I'm, I was more of a romantic, you know. But I could be a freak too. You know, it's time to be a freak, but you know, with my man, you know, you know, sometimes you have to. It has the romance has to be there. Has it always been a missionary, or just recently now you're getting, you know, more mature? You like doggy back in the day, or it's always, always been a missionary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's been a missionary. Yeah. you like sucking dick. I love sucking dick. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, the mic. I love sucking dick. And you know that. <laughs> <laughs> can you deep throw it out of this? I can do it then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to watch Debbie Diamond's movies, and I was like, she was a perfect teacher, her and Gina Fire. Whoa. You know, they were my teachers, you know? And I was like, okay. But Gina Fire can really do it. Debbie was a strong girl. Oh, yeah, is a strong yeah, girl. Yeah. She's a cool chick, right? She, she, she was a trooper. She's gangster, huh? I know. Gangster. She's strong as hell. Big, strong. Gangster, and I loved it. She was good. Yeah. Gina Fine was a great star, too. Um, you like cum on her face? I didn't like messing up my makeup because I would have to wash my face and then go sit in the makeup chair for like two hours. Uh, you know, so I wasn't like, blah, blah, blah. no, no, no. You didn't like to suck and swallow? No, because I had a boyfriend. You know? ah! You know, this, that's not nice. <laughs> so on some other guys come, you know, and you go home and you with your boyfriend. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. I did have morals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I did. I did. I did. You know, there are certain things that I, I wouldn't do. And I, and I put my foot down and I wouldn't do it, you know. But, um, no, um, as far as, like, Swallowing Kong? Let's talk about the black actors. This is about the last questions we have here. Okay. Who's your favorite black porn star? Lexington Skill. Yeah? Yeah. And he's a good guy. He's a he's, he's smart. Yeah. You know, he was a stock worker. He's um very soft spoken. Yeah. And when every time I went to his home he was very accommodating. And very nice, you know. He's not a mean guy. And whatever he did that was undercover, he never threw it in your face unless you see it. You just found out about it later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I really, really did like him, you know. He was just very, very intelligent. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. From a good family and, you know, he was, he was just a good guy. Mm -hmm. What about, let's talk about, well, you know what, we talked about the girls. I guess there's a girl we missed out, missed on, was Midori, I thought was a pretty and a great um, porn star. Midori was great. Beautiful, I thought she was very pretty. She was very pretty. Or is very pretty, whatever, she's still alive. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I saw a picture of her the other day on Instagram or something, and oh. she still got that face. Yeah. She had a very pretty face. And even the twins, Chocolate and um, Mocha. Yeah. Yeah, have you seen them? Yeah, yeah in India, I talked to her a lot. Really? You talked to India? Yeah, those girls are still beautiful. India's still in LA? Um, she was in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah. India was cool. She had a really uh, exotic, uh, like, yeah, but really that's exotic. What, that's, that's where they were to do that, that phase where they wanted the really petite, like, you know, uh -huh. girls. It wasn't the big boobs and the curvaceous. Big butts, a lot of big yeah. butts. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just all big butts, booty everywhere. <laughs> right. You know? Even I got some booty. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good though. I can try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, anything else you want to say? Um, yeah, um, it's very nice to see you. And I'm, I was really excited to do your show. Um, um, Tom was supposed to come with me to do it with you, but you know, we, we'll be back. Yeah, you know? I would love to get Tom on here. Yeah, yeah. I, really, from the bottom of my heart, I think Tom is a very good actor. He's an excellent actor. You know what I mean? Very, very brilliant actor. He's, he's brilliant. And I would love, it would be, you know, my honor. And he's so funny. Honor. I mean, so he's, he's so funny. cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah. So if you can get him here, that would be a dream. And he really likes you too, yeah. so. Cool. Yeah. So um, it was really fun to come and do this yeah. and see you. It was know. nice. It's, it's like a, it's like you know. It a little took therapy. Me, yeah, yeah. It took me back to my past, and I went to places where 
I didn't remember, and now I can understand why certain things happen later on in my life, you know? So, yeah, it was a little therapy. Well, it was therapeutic for both of us, huh? Yeah. Because we, we never hashed out a lot. Because, you know, I hold the grudge <laughs> for a long time. You did, 20 years. But, um, you know, and so, you know, I can see the perspectives, like I said earlier. So, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's good. Uh, it's nice. It's uh, interesting, right? Yeah, it is interesting. Interesting, right? The, um, I mean, yeah, we were, because before you, I only had one girlfriend. Yeah. Shannon, remember? Shannon. And, uh, and so you were my second girlfriend. So, you know, that's a pretty powerful yeah. position in my life. Yeah. The truth is... Uh, and you bought me two rings. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is I probably only had five girlfriends. Wow. Yeah. Which is, you know, for a guy like me, you know, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's not that many. You that's know? not that many at all. So, yeah. What do we count? One, two, three, four, three. I'm wrong. <laughs> Twenty-four. <laughs> four. Oh, four. Yeah, four girlfriends. Okay, that's the end of the word, yeah. Four real girlfriends. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. moved in and lives with you, and mm -hmm. I heard about the last one in Malibu, because when I went to see you um, with Miss Pauline, she's like, girl, I think he's single. And no, no, said, no, I've been with that girl forever. You still with her? Wow. Anyways, <laughs> so we are going to sign off, <laughs> TV Boy TV signing off, and with the beautiful, lovely Dominique Simone. Nice to see you. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs>